minds in the contract negotiation process. In reading the proposed local law four and proposed local law five of 2022 that you're discussing this evening, I have some concerns. When Trustee Linden first proposed changing the village's rate structure for the water and sewer service, I felt the intent was most likely to try to once again charge town customers outside the village a premium rate in order to balance the, village, the village's budget. Now in reading the local laws, anyone can see that the intent is clearly to attempt that once again and overcharge the customers outside the village. Local law states, note water rates to the town of Pomfret and town of Dunkirk water districts or other outside the village water customers shall be increased accordingly as provided by the contracts with the village of Fredonia and such outside water customers and the village. I think that's redundant because it mentions the village twice, by the way. Any such contracts referring to rates charged for village residents users shall be referring to the rate charges for 1,000 to 149,999 gallons consumption per quarter. I think everyone in this room can see the clear intent of your proposed law. However, when the town and village reached our agreement on our water and sewer district contracts, the village did not have a two-tiered rate structure. Attempting to give reduced pricing to one large village customer, the State University of New York Fredonia, and not to its other large customer, the town of Pomfret, flies in the face of the contracts that we negotiated. The village cannot unilaterally impose a change to our contracts, and I will let you know that if you pass these local laws and attempt to do that, the town of Pomfret will pay the reduced rates for any and all water and sewer districts to which the volume discount applies. If the village board passes these local laws, it will need to renegotiate our contracts in order to implement what you're looking to do. And I can tell you that I will not support approving that change with the town council. Further, the town will likewise have to hold a public hearing on amended billing rates for our water and sewer district customers if the village changes its billing rates. I will consult the town council on possibly using that public hearing to ask for input from our water district customers about whether or not they would like the town to continue purchasing water from the village of Fredonia or if they would prefer that we begin planning a move to the North County Water District for the village's district water, for the town's district water suppliers. The water main connection is currently being made at the Portland, Pomfret, and Pomfret Sheridan town lines would make this change possible for several of our water districts. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to address the board? Hello, I'm Richard Ketchum, uh, 22 Burnett in Fredonia. Um, when I saw the proposal, I was, I don't know, a bit uh, perplexed, I guess I would say. So I did a little research online, um, which I'm sure many people did, and asked, you know, how are water rates calculated, typically? And what I found was there's a wide range, uh, but the most common, by far the most common, is to have a fixed base rate and then a usage rate. And often in uh, rural areas, uh, it's a USDA government website, it was one particular one I looked at, said in rural areas where there was high uh, food production and farming, similar I say to our area, uh, there's often a block rate, but it goes down for each uh, block uh, after a base rate is uh, uh, there for everybody. And that we should have a base rate as we have now and the overwhelming majority of communities do, and then have a usage rate on top of that. Again, exactly what that usage rate should be, I'm not really qualified to say because I don't know what all the costs are, but I do know we've had a base rate and a usage rate for many years, and I think that's the fairest uh, uh, way to do it, and also to have a reduction for our largest users, such as the college, such as potentially uh, for uh, the town, but um, you know, generally speaking, uh, the higher the volume in most things, the less per unit one pays. So that's my thoughts. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else, please? <coughs> okay, I'm Eric Huddy. I'm one of two founding partners of Agri-America. Um, we commercially grow grapes here in northern Chautauqua County, and we also uh, manufacture bulk grape juice, grape juice concentrate, and grape products of these two markets. Many growers went out of business. Um, many abandoned their vineyards. 
In order to stay in business, we had, to find, we had no other choice than to find alternative markets for our grapes. We finally had the opportunity to purchase the Fredonia Cliffstar plant on Water Street, and we processed our first grapes in 2014. We pr now process grapes there for more than 75 family-owned farms in the local area. The shuttered plant on Water Street probably produced about $1,000 per year of water and sewer costs for the village of Fredonia. I can tell you in 2021, Agri-America paid in excess of $100,000 to the village of Fredonia for water and sewer services. So in essence, Agri-America transformed an essentially non-performing asset, asset on the water and sewer system to a major contributor. As my understanding, Agri-America is now one of the largest or possibly the largest private contributor towards the water and sewer system. $100,000 annually should be a welcome surplus to the village of Fredonia. The idea that the village is now considering to transfer a significant financial burden to us is a real concern to us. And I also want to take this opportunity to make you aware of added costs that we encounter as it relates to the utilization of the village of Fredonia wastewater treatment system. We've all experienced times of discolored water, orders to boil drinking water and such. For a food processing company, the manufacturing of high quality food products with an uncertain water supply causes production delays and becomes incredibly costly. Having a dependable water, high quality water supply is of extreme importance when, com when commercially manufacturing food products like we do. On the effluent side or the wastewater side of things, it is also highly challenging. This week, for example, the village of Fredonia informed us they are not able to fully accommodate the discharge of our wastewater. We are currently throttling back our wastewater down to a trickle. When I say a trickle, it's like two waitresses taking lemonade jugs and filling glasses with it. That's how low that we're that we're an industrial facility, and that's that's what we're dealing with right now. So at this current rate, we will not be able to prepare our plant in time for this year's grape harvest. So therefore, we have no other alternative than to haul, uh, hire us an outside septic hauler to haul our wastewater and dispose of it at an alternative wastewater treatment facility. This is at a cost that's incurred above and beyond what we are supposedly already paying the village of Fredonia for for these same services. I know when I go out to try to sell products and services, especially at a higher price, I must first prove that we're doing an outstanding job with what we're already doing. To substantiate a higher price, I have to prove to the customer what are we going to get or how are we going to increase the value of our service. As one of the largest contributors to the village of Fredonia white water and wastewater system, having us pay more, I do not think we have any greater assurance that the water quality will be enhanced or to reduce of downtime during our production. Furthermore, I think we still will be required to pay the added cost of having a third party all away our wastewater during times when the village of Fredonia sewer plant is unable to process it in a timely fashion. Finally, I'd like to leave you with some words of wisdom that I learned from a highly successful businessman, which I try to abide by. And he said, quote, a deal is only a deal if everyone involved is satisfied and everyone benefits in some way from it, unquote. What you are proposing does not benefit everyone involved. Therefore, it is not a good deal. The Agri-America organization strongly opposes your, uh, your proposal Thank you for listening to our concerns, and I gotta commend you not having air conditioning in here tonight and saving on the energy. <laughs> How many people does Agro America employ? Uh, we had a we had a study done, and it's not just people at the factory. We have approximately eight people at the factory, up to about 30 people during the season, and then if you take into consideration the ripple effect on the fruit farms and such, it's over 100. Okay. We want to keep all those farms. Absolutely. Thank you. My name's Richard Joswiak. I'm from Fredonia, New York on Chautauqua Road. I'm the other founding member of Agri-America. And one thing I like to bring up is people that are on village systems, they're lucky. Because I've been on a well system all my life. And I know what the costs are. I know what it's like when all of a sudden the pump goes and you don't have no water. I know what it's like to have to treat the water. 
because we have to treat our water at our house and that. And just looking at, you know, the cost isn't there all the time, but when it happens, it's a huge cost. And people on the Fredonia system, you know, what it comes down to is what is it for the homeowners themselves, 51 cents a day, but you're moving the burden to other places where it's a, it ends up being a big burden. And like Eric said, you know, we're trying to sustain our business, do what we can, the best we can, and then we get hit with something like this, and no, we don't agree with what this proposed law wants, want, if it is passed, what it does. So we're not in favor of it. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Joe Pucciarelli, Middlesex Drive. Uh, I guess my first question, and I've been following this a little bit, but the reason for the rate increase is... The reason for the rate increases. This. Okay. Um, the reason for the rate, it's an, <clears throat> actually it's not a necessarily increase. What it is is a removal of the base fee and then an adjustment of the rate. But the, the, the removal of the base fee um, is due to that there isn't any account for of, um, there's, there isn't any account for um, in our budget for what it specifically is used for. You don't get a um, say your first 5,000 gallons for it. There isn't any association of a project specifically. And when, when it was mentioned earlier um, that uh, many, some communities do use a base fee, but they do use it for specific projects or possibly your first, say, 5,000 gallons. The village doesn't have that. It was put in place in quite a number of years ago, but um, when there was a, a there was a huge uh, loss of uh, sales, and they needed to make up for that loss in their budget. And it was in, in uh, at that time, um, that base feed a added to um, the, the user fee um, wasn't a fair deal for many people of the village because it, it put an additional cost right on top of their, what they were normally paying. So what this does um, is this covers, makes an, a, a proportional um, coverage of cost as a user fee, um, but it also covers the full uh, cost of um, operations um, for, to, to provide this, um, the water and sewer um, within the village, um, like I said, proportionately. Um, and, and it also did, we did take into con consideration for larger users, um, giving them a, a, a discounted rate um, for within the village. And yes, it does address <coughs> the loss um, that we incurred um, from a, some a previous negotiations with the town. We, we, we were able to recoup a little bit of that um, because it will increase um, some of the outside, outside the, the village's sales um, for um, water. Um, at a reasonable, a reasonable increase. The other, of course, there's no doubt there. Um, but it is reasonable because it, before it was not necessarily reasonable. Um, it, as mentioned earlier, it was, um, there were some, some locations were twice the rate. The, um, the, the contracts now say 15% above the village user's rate. That's not unreasonable in anywhere part of the state. It also keeps the rates below well below the North County Water District rates. We're below some, still some of the lowest rates in the, in the, in the area or the region. Um, and uh, so I hope that somehow explains uh, to you, but it would co cover the cost of operations, um, um, but, but putting it at a, at a fair and equitable user uh, fee. So you, you, you pay only for what you use, but also giving reduction to um, large consumers um, in order to um, encourage um, growth and development of, of our industrial areas. Well, I'm not familiar with Dunkirk, but when they enacted the North Chautauqua Water District, uh, I didn't hear too much complaining about the water rates. So I know, did that Dunkirk, the city of Dunkirk go up, are they even with everybody else who's getting water from them, or do they sell water to Brockton and 
you know, so the, forth. The, Do we know that? The city of Dunkirk? Yes. The city of Dunkirk sells water to, to the North County Water District for a profit margin. But and what's the difference between the rate between Dunkirk and the places they sell it to is what I guess what I'm getting at. I don't know right now the offhand exact number. I know that they recently had some uh, rate increases, not only from the city of Dunkirk, but also from the county, uh, raising the rates considerably above where we are. I don't know if Alyssa knows that number right offhand where, where they're at, but um, I, I believe it was um, more, more than $7 per thousand. I, I, can't, I don't have the number right directly in front of you. My concern was of the village rates and not someone else's. Right, but in I, particularly. I just didn't hear anybody complaining about the rates going up there. That's why I was wondering. Well, they right, they you know they you know, their rates were considerably higher than what they were before. I mean, I know that um, the um, Brockton's Brockton pays more than they used to pay on their own service. Um, so does uh, all of all of the other areas, um, and we would we would have had to also. Uh, we would have had to if if we went with the North County Water District. Our, our rates would be way, way higher than what we're talking right now. I looked up the North County, the CDI Waterworks that bills for North County, and it was there was a $65 base fee, which covered your first 5,000 gallons, and then it was $7.50 per thousand after so $7 that. So $7.50 per thousand, so your yeah. first 5,000 gallons cost you $13 per thousand. Mm -hmm. Now, I know, that, I know there's complaints here. I'm trying to make that so you're... Your first thousand gallons cost you a very minimal amount of money. Majority of the village residents' uh, households use less than twenty thousand gallons, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. you know, per quarter. Um, so uh, this was actually given. It's not a great savings. No, it's not huge, but it's a little savings. But it also makes things clean and clear, so you you know exactly what you're paying for. I just like to say one more thing. I think we better take. Mr. Pecos' words to heart because, I mean, there's no place in Fredonia to bring anybody in, any factory, any company, anything to help relieve the stress on the water system, to help our rates. If we lose power for it, we're in big trouble because we're, where are we going to go in Fredonia and put someplace? Nowhere. So it's just something to think about. The, that was a consideration. Um, in, in, in the the cost, the, the amount of water that's sold to, currently to the to the um, town of Pomfret um, is not the most significant portion of our budget, and um, also that um, the the last contract um, left the village losing more than one hundred and eighty thousand dollars a year, and uh, I, I, I voted against that contract. Um, it wasn't a reasonable contract to lose that much money of revenue to support our system and that left them paying um, significantly and because of the base fee our residents were paying um, and the rate that was negotiated at that time and approved for the, for the town, it left the, the, the town residents actually paying less for the water system than the village residents. That's Didn't, not correct. Well, you may not think so, well, but... No, I know so. The village bills the town of Pomfret Water District your rate. We bill the residents our rate, which is different than... That well, now, the, right. Now, I'm, so, I'm not so saying what... Not I'm, not saying what the, I'm not saying what the town of Pomfret upcharges to the residents, because there's an upcharge, a significant upcharge. Well, it's for, for our debt service. And for and your debt mean, service. But we like need yours. to cover our debt service. We need to cover all the maintenance and repairs. There's been... As it's been discussed over many years of kicking that can down the road, but those all these issues are being addressed, but those costs need to be paid for, and uh, and, and uh, so it has to be a reasonable cost though. And this, um, I work closely with our treasurer, to, and she worked out the, the a formula that um, would make this make this reasonable, so we could cover those costs. I just, and, I would just take to see. I mean, you know, I'll just. Bring it, like when the gambling came into effect, you know, New York State gave the uh, uh, the Native Americans the rights to the gambling. Was it ten years later? They're taking part in it. They lost out on all that revenue. We lose path for it, and they get a warehouse and two warehouses. We lose that that chance. You know, what I'm saying if they go to the North Waters, pay more for water though. Huh? 
they'll be paying more for water because they have an upcharge. But oh. they will be bringing com companies into the, which well, will be, if they were using our water, what I'm saying is, well, we got to watch, be very careful here. Well, we're the other yeah. water source, the reservoir. There's Lake Erie and there's right. us. But if they do go to the North Water District, they don't need us, right? I think your point, Mr. Pucciarelli, is we'll be losing revenue. Yes, you know, so. Well, you know, that's a big if. Right, that's a lot of revenue that's that could a, come in that's a, to relieve the stress. So. That's a big if, but like, well, a, like something I Something we should this, be working on, though. I mean, that's. You know, prior, like I said, prior, prior to, um, um, you know, prior to the, the addition of that base fee years ago, um, you know, th there wasn't issues like that before even you know that you know they didn't have a problem with paying twice what the village rate was but now all of a sudden there you know there's, there's claims of um, of a 15 percent increase a 15 percent a reasonable increase um, so all right thank you thank you thank you good evening uh, Mike Ferguson, uh, village uh, resident, uh, Ventura Circle in Fredonia. But I'm here tonight representing Fredonia Place, assisted living and memory uh, care facility. We know the struggles of trying to maintain reasonable tax base and not pass on additional costs to taxpayers. We also realize that we can't build our business on what's happening today, but what is going to happen tomorrow. And we can't use ifs. We use scenarios. Uh, we don't use as much water as many people. We're very thankful that Agri-America has chosen to remain in Fredonia and actually expand in Fredonia. And we really don't have that many other companies side by side. So it means there's a lot of smaller businesses in the community that are going to absorb this. In our particular case, we have gone through three years of COVID costs that nobody budgeted. Nobody budgeted. We were at 100% occupancy for five straight years, which means we had almost 100 residents in that building, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's a lot of showers, it's a lot of water, it's a lot of meal preparation. It's not going to affect us at such a high rate but we figure somewhere between three to $5,000 more than what we're paying right now. But in the last three years, we've seen significant losses in our <coughs> operations, again, due to the cost of the pandemic. And I'm sure that there are companies that lost businesses, business due to pandemic that are now restructuring how they operate in order to recoup some of that just to break even. There's only one source of revenue in our field, and that is rent. And the only thing we can do is to increase our rent to our consumers, which are our residents, which are village residents, which are county residents, which are in many cases are people who have chosen to bring their mothers and fathers back to the community to live closer to them. So I understand the issues of trying not to raise taxes for the taxpayers, not trying to burden them. But as other people have said, you're also putting a burden on the businesses where if we lose those businesses, if we lose those job opportunities, if we lose the taxes they're paying, it's going to make that water rate much higher than it would be just 15%. I don't know the answer. I don't pretend to know what the answer is. I thank everybody sitting in the board for the time and the effort that you put into it. There's a lot of difficult decisions that need to be made there. Um, but please consider the, the businesses that you do have in the community, the users that you do have in the community, and maybe some unseen costs, some phenomenal unseen costs that have happened over the last three years, whether you're, even if you're not in the health industry. I'm quite sure the food industry, I'm sure the gas and oil industry and all the other industries in the community, the college, which has seen a record decrease in the number of people registering for this fall. Um, that's going to be a tremendous burden on everybody. So again, what is the answer? I don't know if there is an answer, but I know that any additional burden on local business is going to affect everybody. And the only way to be able to lower taxes 
is to create an atmosphere that is conducive to growing business and bringing new people into the community to work in those businesses. And uh, I thank you for your time. I thank you for your effort. And for the residents and the owners of uh, Fredonia Place, we thank you for your time as well. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else <coughs> to address the board? Hi, Wayne Walter, 10 Castile in Fredonia. Uh, my question is about the sewer rates. We're a family of three, and our last water bill, we use over 30,000 gallons of water for a family of three. Obviously, that's not all going to water. I water my yard, uh, we have a pool, so most of that goes to keep my yard nice. I like to keep my grass green. Why would I pay more for sewer than I am even for water if it's not even going in the sewer? It's going into the ground, it's going into my pool. I've been asking this for years and no one gives me an answer. Like why do we pay more for our sewer rate? Can anybody answer that? Well, you, you can't, you have, that's, this is how you determine how much water, <clears throat> water is, your sewage is based on your water usage. And there isn't, there isn't metering on your sewer. Um, and it just it's, it's done that everywhere um, that's, that's but that's how that's how you determine how, how you how it's cost and of course your your fee associated with the with the, the usage of your water for your sewer is based on the cost of operations of the plant to make it so that um, you know, we could maintain the plant and, and, and the facilities necessary for treatment of sewage it, it's a pretty pricey operation oh, yeah, it is it is more than it is more than the the cost of uh, production of water. You're right. Well, like you say, you're trying to make it fair for everybody, <coughs> but that doesn't make it fair if this water is going into the ground. It's not going into the sewer. Like years yeah. ago, they wouldn't even charge you. You could call them up and tell them you're gonna fill your pool up, and they wouldn't charge you the 20,000 gallons I'm putting in my pool. Yeah. Not the, They would charge you the water, but not the sewer rate. Yeah, I'd, I mean, we could buy water, but I can't buy water to sprinkle my yard every day, you know? I understand exactly what you're saying. But right now we currently do not have a way to meter what exactly goes into the sewer and what exactly goes into the ground. And until that could happen, there's no way to charge you any other way than the amount of water usage. Now down the road, if we could, somebody can figure out a way to, you know, say this is what's going down the pipe and what's going that way. I mean, that, that, that could be a possibility, but there's no structure in place right now to do anything like that. The charge for sewer usage is actually more than water, a lot more. It costs, it costs a lot of money to treat the sewage as opposed to treating the, it costs more to treat the sewage than the water. So you have to base it on the cost to treat the water and the cost to treat the sewage. So you're telling like the, the basic homeowner, the little guy, if he wants to keep his yard nice, don't water your yard, let it get brown, let it die. And have what, what, what I'm telling you is, is that if, it, if, if we have 30,000 30, gallons going to your house, we have to assume that 30,000 gallons is going to the sewer. So if it costs us let's say $10,000, just dumb number, to, to treat that water to get it to your house, it may cost us $15,000 to treat it on the other end. Now, we don't know exactly what that amount went in is, but that's what we have to base it on is how many total gallons came through your property. And the cost is higher going out than it is coming in. I think uh, until we come up with a solution to install, or if there is, if that's even possible, to install meters on your uh, sewage going out, that would be the only way that I think we could keep track of that. And, uh, yeah. You know, I don't know if that would be, um, I'm sure there'd be a, a pretty substantial cost to do that to all the users in our village because we just, uh, well, I don't know. If you could just do it to individual uh, individual people if they wanted the individual uh, meters on their sewer, I guess, depending on the way you use your, your water. That's something to definitely look into, yeah. but that's, that's a thought that if there's a way to meter the sewage from your house, maybe we can do that. So I'm Kelly Walter, 10 case Steel, Wayne is my husband. How do we get that ball rolling? Or do I read about that we're gonna have studies, we're gonna have engineers, so that I, there's nothing in place right now? Must start as an money. idea, money. Um, how do we get that ball rolling? Because we've lived here 28 years. Mm -hmm. We're not the only people in the pool that like to keep our yards nice. That's what Fredonia promotes, keep your property nice. So, I agree with you because so even though we're I, talking about I get water, a big water bill myself. And a high yeah. water bill. Our water bill is almost $400 this month. Oh, yeah. So was yeah. mine. Yeah. So was mine. Um, raise the issue to start as, yeah. so, as an idea. Who so, we look into? So in relation to that, but not part of the uh, public hearing, we are doing a uh, RFP for engineering services for the village tonight. And hopefully the board will pass that and we can move forward on a lot of these projects. So, yes, that's the first step. 
is getting an engineer to do engineering studies for these projects. And for a sewer meter that measures your so, Yeah, any, 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 any projects, any, any water and sewer infrastructure projects. So that, means that would be at the public hearing, not this meeting. It would be a it would be different, yes. Yeah. But yes, the, and I, and I guess the question is, is there a way to do it at all? I, I don't know of any community that does that, so we'd first of all have to find out even if it is a possibility we at all. We first gas well. We can have first sewer. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you. Yep. Is it possible to ask? If, if, I know that we just passed. You know, the president passed trillions of dollars in infrastructure funds. Has Fredonia been able to receive any of that? And if we have not received it, is there a timetable on maybe some of that coming in? Where we we're, we're, uh, we're trying to get engineering studies to get some of that. You have to have an engineering study to apply for some of these grants and things. They have to be shovel ready. So until, so that, yeah, so later on in the board meeting, we're going to be, we're going to be requesting funds to do engineering studies to top, do our four or five, six, seven top projects. At that point, once we have the engineering studies, then we can apply for these grants, and that's the way everybody has to do it to get them. There's, so. there's an engineering study being done as we speak at the uh, dam and spillway. So once they get finished, we'll know exactly, hopefully, we'll know exactly what we're looking at, what kind of money we're looking at. At that point, we'll have that study. Mm -hmm. At that point, we can apply for a grant. To answer your question, though, we want as much of it as we can. <laughs> okay. True. All right, we have somebody at the podium. Yes. Ann Ekman, 14 Ventura Circle, also Deputy Supervisor of the Town of Pomfret. Um, I'm just imploring you to keep the base rates for everybody. The Town of Pomfret just laid water lines in Lilydale. I said that we shouldn't charge them when they're not there year round, and we had a good discussion about you have to have a base rate in order to keep your maintenance and even if somebody's not there their water lines run in front of their house so the fire protection is there there is so much that you can do with a base rate so i'm just doug and i were on small business revolution together we watched the businesses close one after another we lost so many businesses during covid and i am just so afraid as someone else mentioned if we start charging our higher users and specifically the ones outside of the village you're going to shutter businesses fredonia needs to focus on being business friendly we want this community to prosper but you can't force agro america out of business and by the sounds of it that's what you're going to do so i just implore you to keep a base rate and <laughs> figure this out uh, as mr putrelli said i think i don't know the answer but we need to figure out something different so as to not harm our businesses any more than we already have thank, thank you. you can i ask one question of you yeah you mentioned there your new your new water you your, your your new um, your new water lines that you're you discussed and the costs associated with it is my understanding from your meetings um that the, your base rate includes your cost for those districts, specific districts of water lines. Correct. So, that, right. So those are those are specific projects. Right. That's. I just want to make that clear. Those but are specific we, projects. Right. Okay. So, yeah. Thank you. But we did in, we did institute a base rate for a brand new Lilydale water district. Right. A lot of people don't realize that Lily, Lilydale is inside the town of Pomfret. So we were responsible for going out seeking grants, bonding doing RFP, RFPs, doing engineering studies. And including in the cost of, of building that, for that very specific area, the base rate is to cover the debt service on that specific area. And also to cover, um, my understanding is the first X amount of thousands of gallons, correct? Yep. Okay, so so you have a determination of exactly where that base rate covers. So it's you get so many thousands of gallons at a, at a fairly excessive rate. Um, and um, then the cover of very, the, of, of excessive, inst rate? excessive. Oh, it comes from the village of, or Village of Casadega. Well, I mean, it's not an excessive rate. So, so then, uh, but anyhow, see so your your costs in in the any any place that you're doing new water lines. It's it's the the, the cost of the water lines. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which, as For, we all know, Fredonia has a huge infrastructure that. problem. We yeah. We, yes. Is there yes. anybody else that would like <laughs> to address the board? Nope. 
There'll be time for everybody. We'll make sure everybody's. <laughs> Good evening, uh, Pete Stather. I'm the controller over at AgriAmerica. Um, as Mr. Huddy kind of indicated earlier, we have very fixed contracts with our mm -hmm. customer base, which essentially forces us to contain and control our costs. I guess my question to the board is, the what has the Village of Fredonia done to what steps, measures have you taken to control and contain the cost for the water and sewer? You know, I mean, I, I, can, I can, I'll jump on that a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, the, the village is doing its best to replace, repair, and upkeep the system. But the cost of chlorine alone has gone up, and I don't know where Allison is, but the cost of chlorine has gone up something like 33% in the last year alone. Some of these fixed costs, there's nothing we can do about controlling or maintaining that cost. Yeah, there's nothing fixed about it. There's nothing fixed about it at all. So to answer your question, we're doing our best to maintain the system, keeping updated and making upgrades as we can go along. But we're just like you guys are relying on these outside, you know, shipping nightmares and manufacturing nightmares to, to keep costs at a reasonable base. And right now, what's 33% up from last year, maybe 55% up next year. We can't say that without. So we're, we're trying to buy proactively trying to do everything we can but it's it's in, in the last year the cost of producing a gallon of water has gone up 25 percent the last year and this year um, we're running at a deficit our water and sewer income is we're running at a deficit is that correct yes so about 540,000 just water alone 680 in sewer and, and we're currently I believe losing money to the town of Pomfret so I mean I, I want to supply the town of Pomfret, but the contract that was negotiated in the past with them has actually put us in a hole that we need to make up in some way, shape, or form. Now, if we're charging them five and they're charging their district eight or whatever, that's that's fine on their end. But everybody's worried about the town of Pomfret being cut off by us right now. We would actually benefit as opposed to what we're charging them for water right now by losing them as a customer. They would actually hurt themselves because they'd have to buy water from the North County Water District at almost double the rate that we're charging them. I'm not sure that's a conversation we want to have yeah. right here. Yeah. Yeah. Anyhow, I think you're talking about fixed, fixed uh, Correct. costs and not fixed. The cost of making it is not a fixed cost. That's your base fee. Your base fee is your fixed costs of your infrastructure, your uh, upkeep on the plants, that sort of thing. The non-fixed are the the, what the cost produced the water and obviously that changes based on, on the, uh, the cost of uh, the materials to produce it so that's the way I look at fixed and not fixed costs there's certain things that you're gonna you know, we need to have to operate uh, and also the, no the, what. the um, how funds are handled within a municipality are somewhat different than a corporation a, a for-profit corporation mm -hmm. Well, we've, um, we've really had to tighten our belts. Yeah, and it, considerably. You know, and we have tried, are working to tighten our belts as much as we can. Uh, there's no doubt, um, but there are things that need to be attended to in order to continue to provide the water and sewage. I mean, that, that, it's just it's it's. We don't want to be mandated by the state. We don't want to get to that point because then you don't have the ability to borrow money to, to get or get grant. You could borrow money, I'm sorry, you could borrow money, but you, you don't have the ability for grants if you're mandated, mandated to. You, you, it has to come out of pocket then. So we're, we're trying to proactively go after the projects that um, need to be attended to, but there's costs, and the costs keep going up, as you're aware for, with everything. Thank you. Thank you. Can you tell me how much is fixed costs and what percentage of your budget versus variable costs? Well, that's uh, you, can, you can't actually. There isn't. There, there, there isn't. There isn't actual fixed costs. Is um, what, what's included in this rate, um, a, a rate adjustment, is the, the full cost of operations. Okay, this determines the full cost of. This is what it takes to cover the full cost, and that's also how we determine the, the sale up to outside of outside the villages. You have to have full cost recovery. It's just like I'm sure you know, as far as in in that in that sense. The, the village is similar to a corporation was where you have to determine your full, full cost recovery before you could determine your rates uh, associated um, that you're going to be charging your customers. 
Uh, but that's the only way, the one very few things that make it similar. Yes, sir. DM Pecos 110 Johnson Street, Town of Pomfort. Again, just to clarify a couple issues. For the Lilydale Water District, the Town of Pomfort purchases water from the Village of Casadeo. We purchase it at the same rate Village residents purchase the water. We charge 48 cents per thousand for our O&M of that water system because we have chlorinator, we have operators, we have costs above and beyond what the, the uh, village bills us. The uh, village or the Lilydale residents do pay a, de a separate debt service charge for the debt service on that um, system. That would be the same um, if we were to go with the North County Water District and that is why the village of Brockton's residents paid more because they were staring at a significant cost to upgrade their system and it was cheaper for them to pay the cost through the North County Water District. And I would caution you because if you're looking at all the upgrades your system needs, you can't compare your cost right now to what you would be paying if you make all those because you're gonna have significant debt service and a significant investment that you're, that you're, that you're going to have to make. I would just mention on the cost that this gentleman was talking about, the fixed cost. Um, yes, I agree with Trustee Linden. It is a, um, a municipality's um, requirement that we cover the cost of our water and sewer districts. Same with the town of Pomfret. Um, however, it is incumbent on you to make sure that what you're charging to those water and sewer districts is reasonable. And I think if you take a look at yours, you'll find that you can have some places that you have some work to do. Um, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. My name is Robert Scott of Pulaski Street in the Village, and I wish to thank you again for allowing me to speak on the proposed water rate change. If you remember, I addressed this board at your last meeting on August 8th, bringing up several points, which to save time, I only briefly touch upon now. One, I believe water is a necessity for life and the most vital service that the Village provides. Two, there are fixed costs and variable costs in the water service. Variable costs include the water, the chemicals, the chlorine, screening materials, etc. A fixed cost, a little harder to identify, include the billing statements, hydrants and fire protection, which impact the homeowner's insurance rates, street cleaning operation, flushing dead end lines, etc. The costs involved in documenting the physical assets and the day to day management of the system, including planning and grant applications should also be considered as a fixed charge. Three, the monthly basic charge for water presently is less than those for electricity, natural gas, telephone service, etc. It is a bargain compared to anything else. Four, over the past several years, previous mayors and boards have asked residents to conserve water by altering their habits, by shutting off water when shaving or brushing their teeth, using low flow shower heads and toilets, NSG efficient dishwashers, etc. Wishing to be a good citizen, I have the bills to show my dollar outlay for water is 50% higher, whereas my water usage is less than half. I would also object to covering the cost of reading meters and other fixed costs that snow builds will have the opportunity to avoid by shutting off their water when they have flown south. Would a change in rates be an incentive for others to alter their habits to save money? Six, I spoke to the increased burden on large users of water, such as social clubs, legions, restaurants, and especially the Fidonia school system. Would the increased cost be reflected in the higher school tax bill? The one bill I believe we all dread. Seven, in an unscientific poll conducted by the Observer published July 29th stated that only 44% of the respondents favored higher water costs for the Fidonia major users and 56% did not. Eight, finally I spoke of an Observer editorial speaking on the loss of carriage house in 2015 and the 10% increase in water costs I incurred in 2017 to compensate for the lower revenue received by the village. 
and also the discussion amongst trustees about the State University College at Fredonia, another large customer of the water system, and the possibility of it closing too due to increased costs. After I spoke, a trustee in their report time read a letter from Doug Manley of Carriage House that stated water rates was not a reason for them leaving as suggested by the observer. I would like to make it clear that I did not want to seem that I agreed with the paper, but I was trying to make the point of what effect a large entity or a customer within the water system can have on rates for all customers of the system. At the August 8th meeting, if you remember, I fumbled with my notes as there were a couple items already discussed in the trustees workshop meeting earlier that as a way to save time, I skipped over. But I now think it is important to have them in the official record. Item one, it was stated in the workshop that there was $2 million in funds in the water and the sewer accounts that are available. I was going to state that any business to weather the good times and the bad, or seasonal fluctuations, whatever the case may be, would love to have a steady revenue stream that a base rate would provide. It makes planning, financing, and the overall operation run smoother and maybe more cost effective. However, in reviewing the meeting on the local access, I found out that 1,800,000 was in the sewer funds so I assume the balance of about 200000 is in the water funds. Are the funds interchangeable? Can you use the money from one fund to cover not the other? If not, it appears there's very little flexibility in the water account to cover any drastic swings in revenue. Item two, it was stated in the workshop that it is difficult to obtain knowledgeable personnel, such as a civil engineer, that knows our system to do work when required. I believe another fixed cost that the base rate should cover is at least one village employee, ideally trained as a civil engineer or certified water system manager, that is full time, not only as required, working on managing the water system by documenting the existing assets, prioritizing weaknesses, Overlaying the system assets with low income residential data that seem to have the best chance for grants, planning, and working with grant writers to obtain the necessary funds to improve the system. What a coincidence that our state Senator Joe Brand was in Buffalo the next morning announcing grant funds would be available to replace lead piping in older water systems. Since I believe our water system is quite old. Do we have lead pipes? The workshop se session seemed to say that there was no one available, either on retainer or with knowledge of our system, that could answer that question. I believe we need someone adequately trained to manage the cost of the most vital service that the village provides on a daily basis. Three trustees briefly spoke with me after the August 8th meeting. The first trustee hoped that I could attend tonight's special hearing to put on record my concerns. I canceled the vacation plan, right? To be here tonight, as I feel this is a very important topic that could have a lasting effect for years to come. The second trustee asked if I knew how expensive the water is in Duncan, which I said I have some idea. However, to be sure, I obtained a water bill from a residential address within the city of Dunkirk to compare. What I found was very interesting. With the bills from both communities, there is only the bare information provided, the usage and the dollar amount. Unlike the electric, the gas, the telephone bills, there's no breakdown of any base charge the dollar rate per thousand, or any other incidentals that are based on usage. I went online to see if rates are itemized there and no information was available that I could find. Why is it such a secret? Is it a government conspiracy? Utilities do as the PSC says, the government don't have to, we don't have to itemize. Anyways, I, just, I digress. Assuming that each system has a standard basic charge of $25, 
the Fredonia rate is $4.80 per thousand, and the Dunkirk rate is $5.35 per thousand. Yes, Dunkirk is 11.5% more expensive. But the question that comes to my mind is the reliability and the quality of service provided comparable, and that's very difficult to accurately put into dollars and cents. The third trustee said that the plan as drawn up will be reasonable for all concerned and that the plan that the trustee pointed to on the desk proves it. Unfortunately, the plan has not been made public in any way as far as I know, so I guess that I have to take the trustee's word for it. Why wasn't it made public, even have to be redacted to provide privacy? Is this another government conspiracy? It sounded like they wanted to just to make it fairer, but revenue neutral. But what I do know is that if the costs go down for some, the costs will go up for others to make the plant revenue neutral. Let's take a moment to look at that scenario. As I stated two weeks ago, the social clubs, the legions, the restaurants, etc., could take a hit. And we know the hospitality industry, which Fredonia has a lot of establishments, works on a very small margin. Please keep in mind that the hospita excuse me, hospitality industry is a large driver of sales tax revenue of which the county shares with the village. Could the loss of one establishment negatively affect the village's share of the sales tax revenue? That begs the next question. What are the chances of a large user of water locating into the village? Besides the hospital, which is still in doubt, is there any location or building that you know of that can entice someone that uses a lot of water to establish themselves in the village? I state in the village because if it's outside the village, I believe they would be looking to establish themselves with the North County Water District. The other side of this question is, what are the chances of a large user of water leaving the village system? I disagree with the trustee that said the state could close the college as it, would, as it did with 13 prisons last year. The state of New York has invested too much money in the university system to close down the college, and recently the governor has announced increased capital funding for the system. I am sure that Fredonia State has full-time people employed that are looking at all ways to lower operating costs and that a $20,000 increase would be on their radar. With that in mind, the observer picture and caption in Thursday, August 18th paper would concern me if I was a trustee. The picture was of three new 20-inch isolation valves installed at Brigham Road and 2nd Street, with the caption mentioning one was installed at Brigham Road and Willow Road. I'm unaware of where the interconnect between the village water system and the college water system is, but if it's anywhere near the northwest corner of the campus, how hard would it be to install a new water line and a connection with the city of Dunkirk and on the North County Water District to supply the college with water once the contract with the village ends? It would not be a long line to install from Willow Road with the recently referred to as water treatment plant a short distance away that is a lot closer than the existing Fedonia plant, thus lowering the risk of any potential problems. And with a savings of 20000 a year, the return on investment may be high enough to pull the trigger on such a capital project. By the way, the Observer reported on July 28th that the Fedonia block rate for large users would be $5.35 per thousand gallons. The exact same amount I calculated the Dunkirk residential customer pays now. I wonder if the Dunkirk system has special rates for large users that would further enhance the college's return on investment. Without being able to see and study the plan, I am skeptical of what is being proposed. However, in reading the legal notices published in the Observer on August 10th, I noted two things that really haven't been talked about. The first is the water contracts for the towns of Pomfort and Dunkirk water districts and other village 
water customs outside the village would go up accordingly. Not knowing what those contracts spell out of rates involved, I would be willing to bet those customers outside the village are in for a big surprise if the rate change is implemented. Can any large increase for these districts and their customers give them reason to look for the North County for the next contract? The second item I noted is that the sewer charge, which has been largely ignored in all the conversations, will also change. Is this the same scenario in that we eliminated the base rate and not quietly raising the rates for everyone? I hope so. As an aside and thinking about it, I finally answered my own question on why the sewer charge is always higher than the water charge. I believe you don't have to have a sewer service outside the village if your system system is working properly, properly and thus there are a lot less customers for sewer than water to spread the costs involved. Just wondering if a rate increase is implemented, could someone outside the village go to a septic system from the sewer system or are they locked into the service? Just wondering. As I stated two weeks ago, I should just sh sit down and shut up as the proposal with what little has been reported would save me around $20 a quarter. But as I said at that meeting, I'm a member of a great community and I should share in the costs of maintaining it. Finally, you're probably saying finally, I do not like to criticize something without offering an alternative or a suggestion. As I know so little about the plan, I cannot offer an alternative at this time. However, I do have a suggestion to offer. There is a cannabis committee, a recreation committee, a Fedonia festivals committee, a Spark Streets committee. Why not a committee for the most vital element of life in Fedonia, water? If there is one, why haven't we heard from them? If not, why can't we establish one? It could, could, it could contain a plumber, civil engineer, streets employee, grant writer, public relations for anyone interested, retired or otherwise, and helping to modernize, prioritize, and get the necessary information gathered to make the water system better or make grant writing more productive. Maybe someone on the committee would know a civil engineering and or related field of study student going to college either here at Fredonia or elsewhere, that could do an independent study semester for extra credit or internship to further their career. Career, excuse me. I guess what I'm saying is that maybe a little more emphasis should be placed on a water system that what I am aware of and the more people involved, there's a better chance of something being productive being done. Thank you again for your time and allow me to present my thoughts to this board on this very important matter. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else that would like to address the board on these two local laws? <clears throat> Rick Catcher again of Burnett Drive. Just very quickly, everyone agrees that there's fixed costs. So really the question comes down to is the best way to pay for them uh, through a purely usage rate or should there be a base rate? And again, I'm no expert on it. I did like what uh, Mr. Scott had to say. It was interesting, but and I don't know how urgent the decision is. And, you know, it obviously would take some time. But I would say this: it's clear that the overwhelming majority of communities—that doesn't mean it's right for Fredonia—but the overwhelming majority of communities have a base rate, and uh, I think there's a reason for it. I already expressed my view. I think the base rate should be included, and it is appropriate because we all uh, should share one person. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to address the board? I have, uh, I spoke to uh, Michael Metzger, who's the Vice President of Finance Administration at SUNY Fredonia today, and he uh, sent me an email that he said I could uh, relay to the board and to the public here tonight as far as uh, what he his thoughts were from SUNY Fredonia. SUNY Fredonia provides a significant economic impact to the village of Fredonia. We currently have a draft water and sewer agreement that is at the state office of the controller for review. My position is to move forward with this agreement, which means do not move forward on the proposed local laws. So that is the opinion of the vice president of finance from 
an administration from the SUNY Fredonia. There's no one else that would like to uh, comment from the public. I would like to, I'd like to say just a few brief words and I'll, I'll open it up to the board if they would like to make a brief statement. Sure. Well, we talked about, and I, I respect what Mr. Bird said with regards to it, it was a 25% increase in that type of thing, um, treating the water. But keep in mind, you know, besides ourselves with seniors who have been paying taxes, many of them have been paying taxes in Fredonia for many, many years. Many of them, even though they live with us, still own property and can you continue to pay taxes. I'm not here to speak for WCA or for anybody else who's in a very similar business. But keep in mind that simple things for us, things that we use hundreds of every single day. Rubber gloves, rubber gloves used to be $5.50 a box. They are now $56 per box. Masks that we are still forced to wear uh, in our, to protect our residents on a day-to-day -day basis used to be $4 a box. They are now close to $45 per box. The PPE, those things that are no longer provided to us, and we were very thankful that uh, you know the government provided a lot of that PPE in the beginning. Um, but just like you, just like everybody's household, we are running into transportation issues. Um, you know, getting being able to get our food to our residents, we have to change our menus almost in midweek because things that we were ordered are not available to us right now. It's a tremendous inconvenience, it's just a tremendous burden. So a lot of people say, what are you complaining about? It's just a couple thousand dollars that Fernonia Place would be paying more in water than you are now. But consider the few things we just mentioned and multiply that by everything it takes to run the company. And we have to pass that on eventually, as hard as we try not to raise our rates, to people, as I said, a very large portion of people who've already been paying taxes into Fredonia for many, many, many years. And uh, this is their retirement. This is their, we're being entrusted with their families to take care of them and to make sure that their loved ones are being safe and taken care of. And that added cost, uh, while it may be enough, and we're certainly not threatening by any means to leave town or go out of business. This is our home and always will be. But the burden of those additional costs just like you're saying, the additional costs that it takes to run a village, to run to run uh, the town of Pomfret, is just tremendous at this point. And any way to spread that around or uh, hold off until maybe these studies are done and we see if some of those costs can be in, in, uh, absorbed by uh, better infrastructure is, is, would be a great help to those folks as well as the, the owners of these companies. I, I agree, improved infrastructure down the road will, will make a difference, there's no doubt, but we have to pay for that to get to that point. Um, and on the other flip side, um, there are thousands of people in the community, many of them elderly who live on, um, on fixed incomes in, in the retirement. Their costs of living have gone up considerably percentage-wise, the same as your business, the cost of all their uh, uh, food and, and anything, you know, cleaning of their clothes or buying new clothes, or anything for, sure. for the, from themselves and their own, in their own homes have also gone up. Um, and so there is a, a very similar aspect to that. So it's not just your business. Oh, no. it's, it's, the, yeah. it's a community and it takes a community to make this function. And it, by having a, a justified um, cost to manage that, is, is the key factor. Yeah, I never meant to mislead people to think that that's only happening to people if we're not place. It's happening everywhere. It's happening to every person in this room. Uh, so any additional cost associated with that is, yeah, it just makes it tougher. Same, and yeah, and again, uh, not that Fredonia can resolve this issue, but again, for what is it, the third or fourth census, Chautauqua County leads New York State in the number of people leaving the state of New York. Somewhere along the line, that's got to stop. And it can't just be on the burden of Fredonia, but it's got to be, be. A, a plan for New York State. But it, this is where we live. This is where we pay our taxes. This is where we want to live. This is where we raise children. This is where we raise family. And we need to work together to be able to make that work. Thank you. So to move forward here, uh, full disclosure, I don't 
as mayor, I don't have a vote in these decisions unless there is a tie, and we have all five trustees here tonight, so there will be no tie unless somebody has to abstain, which I don't see any reason for. But I'm also a resident of the village of Fredonia. I pay water and sewer just like everybody else does. And I don't, I disagree with both of these local laws. Like I'll tell you exactly why. Trustee Linden earlier in, in one of his comments said this is, he wants to make this a fair deal and proportionate. Uh, before this meeting, I looked up in two different, uh, actually old style dictionaries of definitions, unless somebody somewhere <coughs> has changed the definition of these two uh, words that I'm about to tell you about. This is what they are from New Webster's Dictionary at the source about equity. Fairness, equal adjustment or distribution. Equitable, fairly and just. In Merriam-Webster's Collegiate Dictionary, equity, freedom from bias or favoritism. Equitable, having or exhibiting equal equality, dealing fairly or equally with all concerned. So I think the base fees need to stay. I think that's a fair and equitable portion of our billing to the public. What's proposed is currently, uh, you, as a village residence, we pay $4.80 per thousand up to unlimited for water. Uh, the current proposal, village-wide up to $149,999 was $6, which is a $1.20% increase or a 25% increase for regular users up to that point. And over 150,000 uh, gallons, including SUNY Fredonia, the rate would go up to $5.35 or 65 cent increase or a 13 and a half percent increase. Sewer, village wide, we currently pay $6.17 for a thousand gallons. And those $4.80 and $6.17 uh, plus base fees. Base fee for water is $25 per quarter and base fee for sewer is $20 per quarter. So per quarter for both you pay $45 base fee. Village wide sewer increase up to $149,999. The six dollars, which is a dollar twenty percent increase, which is a twenty-five percent. I'm sorry, uh, six dollars and forty-five cents, which is a twenty-eight percent, twenty-eight cent increase or four and a half percent. And anybody over one hundred fifty is six dollars and thirty cents, or a thirteen cent or two percent increase. I asked. I also asked and, and uh, talked to our treasurer. I said, look at what do we need to get the same total proposed income level with these increases, but keep the base fees. I mostly focused on water because those increases were quite excessive, 25% and 13 and a half. And our, our treasurer uh, proposed to me $5.06 per thousand uh, per thousand for water or a 26 cent increase or 5%. It equals out to 5% instead of 25% or 13 and a half percent. So we can do, we, we, I think because of the costs of, our, of making the water are increasing, we do have to increase our, our fees, but we can do it minimally and keep the base fees. I think that the base fees, uh, although we can't right now, right in front of you specifically, say what exactly they cover, there are a lot of things that were described by many of you who spoke here tonight, what they do describe, and I think that is a fair and equitable way to bill our customers and I do feel the burden of our senior citizens, but I feel the burden of our, of our large users too. I feel the burden on SUNY Fredonia. I feel the burden on the grandmas and the grandpas. You talk about fixed incomes. If you work in a private business, some private businesses haven't given people pay raises. So you know what? There's a lot of people on a fixed income. So I feel the burden, but I think the burden can be a lot less. We do have to pay for our increases. I think it could be at a minimum. I don't think we need these Two local laws here. This is my own opinion, being a homeowner and a resident of the Village of Fredonia, and I disagree with them. And that's that's all I have to say tonight. Thank you. I'll open up the rest of the board for a brief I'll comments. I, I understand what Jim is saying, and, he, and he's trying to make everybody pay the same amount per thousand gallons of water. And in retrospect, if you look at it, it does make sense. But unfortunately, I, I don't think it makes sense for our community. Quite frankly, we, I don't have any kids in Fredonia High School, but I still pay school tax. I don't have any kids at Fredonia State, but I benefit greatly from the college being there, from ice skating on their ice rink to walking on their tracks to the kids that are buying gas and soda and whatever in our communities. 
Um, do we bear some responsibility to keep these places here? Absolutely. And quite frankly, we're going to lose the opportunity. I mean, Agri-America applies, has 100 people, eight, eight full-time, another 13 or, or 30 at the, at the juice production, and then another 100, you know, farmers down the road. If they're gone, how many of those people lose? What are we losing water and tax base? My only solution to the problem is, and, and the only thing I think that's feasible is actually that we are probably going to have to raise the base rate just like we raise the tax, you know, the amount that we raise taxes at the beginning of the year. It's, it's unfortunate. We don't want to do it, but as everybody knows, these costs have gone up across the board on everybody. So do I have kids at Fredonia High School? No. But do I pay school taxes? Yes, because I want these kids and these families in the community. So I'm not going to be in favor of either of these amendments, but I do think down the road we're going to have to look at raising the base rates. And, you know, it's tough times for everybody, but that's the only solution that I can see that's feasible for for the community. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to say that I I spoke with Mike at the college, and I spoke with Agri-America, and I spoke with Mike. I try to speak to as many people that would be uh, impacted um, greatest by the changes. Um, and I don't take lightly when a corporation tells me that they could not bear that burden and they would probably have to look elsewhere. Or a college telling me that although we may assume that it's just another bill they send out to Albany and Albany pays it, that's not the way it works. It doesn't work that way. And when I'm told that they would be looking at alternate sources of water supply, that concerns me. I think our, our objective is to increase the number of users not burden the current users that we have where they would benefit by leaving either the 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 district closing down or getting another water source and i take them seriously when they tell me that that is an, um, something that they would be looking at i think we're all we all understand that we can't absorb um, the losses that we have been incurring for the last year and a half and I agree with Dave that water rates are going to have to increase because our costs are increasing. That's just that's just a, a fact. Um, and I think we need to reevaluate or re reevaluate the contract we currently have with the town of Pomfret because that is obviously not working for either party. So I think that contract needs to be um, be looked at very closely. Okay. Anybody else? Um, the, <clears throat> the, the, addressing the, the um, SUNY system, um, the SUNY system operates within the village limits. Um, this has been uh, researched uh, with, with past uh, mayors. Um, they are a part of the village, and and as so, they're uh, required to purchase from the village wherever we purchase our water or, or have our water supply from um, that is um, determined because they're within it within the village itself they cannot go to other sources just because they want to um, and when there's a cost put on the village for any whether there's increases on of taxes people accept that there's, there's a tax increase um, I mean, the mayor proposed at one time a 17% tax increase. Yes, it was outrageous, but we did, the board worked that down to a small increase, but yet it was still an increase. Um, but now, um, like I said, the, count, this, the SUNY system cannot leave. Um, you know, that's already been determined. It's been uh, it's discussed with the state. It's been discussed with the county. Um, that is that's not even uh, something we could talk about uh, because it's, it won't it wouldn't happen um, and um, the the cost again um, we are a lot allotting for a reduced cost for for that system um, yes it's 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 a negotiation just like the the current or past negotiation contract 
we determined a cost. That's the only difference. Was it has nothing to do with supply because they can't get it somewhere else. It's ensuring the, that we um, agreeing that we're going to supply them quality water. So they, um, so we, we just we were able to negotiate with them a, a better rate, and this is still imp imp implements a better rate. Um, but it's. When you talk about businesses leaving or not coming to the village, the village, when we, of course we want to. There's, uh, there's small businesses and large businesses. Of course, um, we want all the businesses to stay. But if we're there to leave, it was already discussed. Um, at what cost would they be leaving it to? Where would they be going for some place with higher rates? And if somebody wanted to come into the village, yes, we have limited industrial space. The village doesn't have a lot. That's true. Um, but we like to keep what's what's available uh, utilized. But the the cost for, of water in, is not going to prevent someone from coming into the village when outside the village would be more. So it, it makes more sense. Like I said, um, people are, are, are seem to be really uh, upset or distraught about this this. Um, it's not an increase. It's a it's a change. Well, I'm sorry. There is a there so, is some people will some people will be paying an increase. Some people will be paying less. Mm -hmm. This is true because that's an adjustment of what happened before when some people were pay, are, were charged more, and some people were charged a lower amount because of the distribution of that. So um, it, it's just correcting that issue. Um, so. It's not going to prevent somebody from coming in, in or out of the village um, based on the water, the cost of water when it's a better rate here than most places. Um, and the rates that the mayor was, was, was speaking of, um, he talked percentages. It, it sounded much more uh, dr dramatic than it was because he was not including the uh, removal of the, the base fee when he was describing the increase in the rate. Yes, I was. Those were increases without the base rate. That's the percentages that you proposed without a base rate. Those are exactly without a base rate. The only one I, a percentage I proposed with a base rate was the five dollars no, and six cents. Comparatively to what our rate is now, but but then you take out the base rate, which means that a, a very large portion of the community will actually pay less. That's not an increase. That's a decrease. Can I ask you, you something? You can't have a percentage of increase when there's a decrease. Can I ask you something? You said a fair deal and proportionate. So you thought it was unproportionate before. Now you're just doing the same thing. You're just shifting the no. proportion to another. You're not making it. There's no equity no, here. Yes, the equity and, no and equity proportional here. You're just rate. Switching it around. The equity and mm -hmm. proportional rate is 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 determined exactly the same for all average users. Um, we did give a reduction for large scale users. No, you didn't. You made. The, you gave, they're increased. What they're they're currently ba paying. based on the. Based on the residential rate, based on the residential rate, which would be six dollars per thousand, um, eliminating that base rate, that base rate is is still overall less um, than 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 be, what it was before. And uh, when for true. and f yes, it is. Anybody anybody using over twenty thousand gallons of water will pay more. Anybody using less than twenty thousand right. gallons will see a, a rate savings. That's right. how it works. Or whether right. it's SUNY Fredonia, I hundred fifty thousand dollars, or anybody in between, anybody over twenty thousand gallons, with and, your increase, will be paying more. And currently, somebody who uses a, about ten thousand gallons pays about nine dollars per thousand. Now, I don't know how that affects somebody who's already paying only barely over four dollars and eighty cents per thousand right now. But I, I guess that I guess that person who uses about ten thousand should be happy for paying that. It's oh, not equitable. That's exactly. It's not equitable. It's not because, equitable because either it's, way. Because it's a user fee. It's, this is not a corporation. This is a municipality. Which basis, way you want to say it's who not base, Who bases? Michelle, Michelle or Nicole, do you have anything? Yeah. To add? We're, yeah. You're, you. 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 I would just. Used up I, a lot well, of time. Just. Here. Just yeah. to. Just to uh, clarify something that Jim said. According to the contract the village has with Fredonia, they can terminate this agreement. The agreement. They can terminate. The but they can't go to, to another municipality. Yes. Yeah, they can. They can That's terminate for convenience. That's how it works. Convenience. It's what, what, one of the reasons they can terminate is just for convenience with at least six months advance written notice. So 
Is it convenient for them to pay less somewhere else? I mean, how could we argue the, the, that point? The, the contract has negotiated rate. It's it's the rate that's negotiated. It's negotiated it's not, everything. It's, it's not terms and conditions of mm -hmm. of having us as a provider, Jim. It's not just a a, well, a, a contract of rate. It's a contract of many things. How would they get the water done? I don't know, but the contract that we have with them <laughs> well, they, includes right. the rate, and it also includes well, the, terms of termination. Well, the village, the service. Cer the village cer certainly wouldn't allow an outside um, provider to come into the village. Well, you know what? <laughs> we're, 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 we need to. Michelle, we need to and, go Michelle and Nicole, would you like to add anything to it? No, I have nothing to add. Michelle, would you like to add anything? Well, I, I can understand where they're coming from about the costs going up, especially for the big users and. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, and and doing away with the base rate. I understand Mr. Scott's position too, because anyone who is a snowbird, as he said, then they don't pay anything. At least they would pay forty-five dollars a quarter with that. And um, I thought I had my mind made up, but I I guess. I, I really, you know, would like to take into consideration uh, somebody like Agra America and uh, maybe if we could try to work out something a little different uh, where the first thousand gallons or five thousand gallons would be a, a certain rate, then it would go down after that. But not to inflate it so much that I don't want to run people out of business, you know. Um, but yet, we do need to make up for our loss, as uh, Erlissa had spoken. What, what were the amounts again? The water is in the deficit of $540,000, and the sewer is $685,000. So now you're talking over a million dollars, and mm -hmm. how do we that's, fix that? That's one, that's, that's one, that's, 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 that's the village. That's business. just this year. And I know that everybody seems to think that they, they have very important issues on their businesses, but that's, this is our, this is the community's business that we're discussing here. This is the community's business. Uh, okay. And how to correct that. I'll let you make one comment, if it's real brief, please. Last, last word. Uh, it just, it's, it's not scientific, but I asked about 10 of my oh, friends in Barstow, okay. who's okay. the one but I just asked them, do they have a base rate where they're a farm? Because most of the time they're up here, six months, six months, whatever. To a person, they told me they have a base rate in Florida when they're, well, it just, again, I'm not saying it's a scientific sample. It just, <laughs> it's very common to have a base rate. Okay, thank you. At this point in time, I'd like to take roll call votes on the two local laws. Uh, we'll start with local law number four, a local law. Uh, you know, this is... Yeah, I think the, we have uh, to go under resolutions. To yeah, they're, they're under the resolution. Is it under resolution yeah. section? Yeah, this, okay. Yeah. Yeah. This is just the hearing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. We'll well, I will. I will close the public hearing at this point. Thank you, everyone, for your concerns and comments. And uh, if you want to stick around and see how the board votes on this, please do. If not, have a good night. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Can we take a yeah, quick break? Yes. Yeah. I need On August 22nd, we have a special presentation from Lan Cheng, uh, Associate Professor of Mathematical Science at SUNY Fredonia. We'll give a brief presentation to the board. Please. Um, thank you, everybody. Uh, my name is Lan Cheng from uh, SUNY Fredonia, and this is uh, my colleague, uh, the Chair of the Department, Julia Wilson. And uh, thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to present a special program from the uh, Department of Mathematical Science. It's called a PIP Math. Um, PICMAP is abbreviation for preparation for industrial career in mathematical science. So in math department, we have a, uh, we have a major, like applied math major. But for a long time, our applied math major have nowhere to apply their skills. And uh, from uh, MAA, the Mathematical so uh, Association of America, MAA, and also the Society of Industrial and Applied Mathematics, SIAM, they actually made this uh, program called a PIC Math. So students can get some uh, project from uh, the real life. Uh, they call it from the problem from a big business, industry, and the government. 
So what they hope to do is they hope to get some project or some problems for our student to do so student can get, uh, get I mean, get some experience and uh, prepare for their career. Uh, the PIG math program starts from uh, 2014, but for SUNY Fredonia, we only joined that program since last year. And this year, we contact the village, and uh, thank you so much for the village to give us an uh, opportunity to present here. Um, before I talk about other details, let me give you like a brief three examples about what PIG math people are doing. Uh, I guess if I ask the village to give the math department some problem to work with, the major concern you have might be, I don't know too much or I'm afraid of math. So how can I give those math people problem a math problem to work with? So here are some examples I can give you. Uh, the first example is uh, a project done by University of uh, North Dakota. So what happened there is the local government gave the students only one street name, so one like a main street they have. And they didn't say anything about what should you do and what's their expectation, what's the, op, uh, I mean the, op, <coughs> what's their uh, goal or anything they want the student to accomplish. So students have to first collect lots of uh, public data and then use the data, they have to do some analysis and then came up with what they can do. At the end, this is what the student accomplished. So here is a, like the uh, project abstract. A case study analysis on a section of the city of Garden Fork, North Dakota, was performed to develop a better understanding of a historical growth pattern in the city and their potential implication for citywide development costs and infrastructure upgrades. The neighborhood of the study runs along one of the city's principal streets and consists of a segment that to a casual observer appear to represent a natural subsection possession similar features. This project sorts a more complete understanding of this neighborhood by using the clustering techniques to help identify subsection that may not be apparent otherwise. So basically, students divide the entire street into several sections, and each section has a, like a similar uh, similarity uh, due to like the infrastructure upgrades. So this might help the local government to decide if they wanted to have some uh, infrastructure uh, improvement, what can they do for each different section of the street. And that is one example. And in this example, uh, the student doesn't have any like a mass input. All they have is a street name and they, will, they want to collect the data <coughs> and then do the study. The second example I had is uh, from uh, Consta College from, uh, and uh, their study is improving waste collection system in downtown area. With this project, the students were given like the current waste uh, receptacle collection uh, locations, type and number in downtown. And then they want to, well, I mean the local government want them to give some uh, sort of uh, improving system. And uh, to improve the waste collection, there are tons of different ways. So students first have to design a, uh, like a survey. And then they have to go out and do the survey, collect the data, process it, and at the end, they will have to come up with some plan. So again, here is the project abstract I have. Many cities experience issue with their waste receptacles, including storage capacity, age, lack of recycling and accessibility. The study presents cost-effective solution that minimizes litter and the waste overflow, and it provides clean alternative toward recycling goals and the limited carbon emission. Additionally, it includes an analysis of compacting trash cans available in the market, an algorithm for placement optimization of waste bins, a survey of the need for recycle or compost, and ultimately present option to improve the current state of the downtown area. So at the end, they came up with a plan of what's a location, what kind of trash bin they should place so they can improve the waste collecting uh, system. And that is my second example. And the last example, kind of like, like uh, related to the like water billing that we just heard. Uh, it's down uh, here. The title of the project is called uh, 
optimal water billing system. So what happened is the local government gave the students uh, current water usage and the billing data. And then the student responsibility would be they have to study the billing system for the surrounding area. And then use a given data and then compare with the other billing system and then came up with a new billing system. And here is what they accomplished. Uh, the water sewage billing strategy for, I'm sorry, I couldn't pronounce the Rural name of Kutztown. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Needs to be uh, re-evaluated. Currently, they use a fixed rate billing system to bill everybody in the town. Whether it be private residents, business, or in universities for water and usage, uh, for water and the sewage usage. For example, the resident or business owner pays C dollars per thousand gallon of the water use it, used. Although this system is simplified and has worked for a long time, neighboring municipality uh, has updated their billing strategy to keep up with increasing costs for providing wastewater management service. In this project, we studied uh, the billing system of surrounding area and implement a tiered system that is up to date and relevant to today's users using a given data from residential and the commercial business in the area. We project the revenue generated from any possible tiered system. We implement a system that is fair to the user and create incentive for the user to conserve water, while at the same time generating enough revenue for the, water, for the wastewater department to cover future cost of operating to exist infrastructure. So that's the third project. I mean, for all the three projects I uh, showed you here, um, it's basically some problem from uh, real life. So students don't get numbers, equations, like, math, like the typical math problem. But they have to do the modeling and then solve. Maybe they don't give the perfect solution, but they will get some approaches. So that's what happens. Uh, here we are looking to see if we can collaborate with the village of Fredonia. So the plan is we will offer a course which is a special topic in PIC math in spring of 2023. Um, we expect a village could give us like one or more problems by October the 24th, 2022. And I picked that date. It's because that's the date of uh, our uh, advising week. So during the advising week, if students know what are the available problems for them to do, then maybe they can choose if they wanted to do the project. Because you know, for students, one well, different student might have different interests in different area. So we hope that we can have the project ready by that time, so students can uh, have some opinion. Um, and then this problem can be the problem that village wanted to solve, or even the. I mean, here, the mass content approach may not be clear, because we are not looking for a, a clear mass problem, mass related problem. So it could be like pretty vague. For example, uh, some of the problem I list here would be, say, for example, like a snow plowing route design or e-scooter evaluation, because I know like we have a <laughs> lot of e-scooter e like uh, introduced this this summer. So maybe by the time, people already have lots of opinions, so students maybe uh, be able to like design some survey, do the survey, collecting data, and then give some feedback about how that is. Uh, another one would be like a wastewater treatment plant influent flow forecasting. Like for example, we can study the past data and then maybe do some predictions and forecasting. And the most problems might be say ear posted, ear posted because uh, it is a student's responsibility to frame the problem and then modeling it and then solve the problem to give the solution. Uh, and also we hope that there will be some uh, liaison from the village so we can have communication between me, student, and the liaison. And for liaison, the major uh, responsibility might be, uh, I think, in the fall semester, like uh, for the fall of 2022, communicate between me and the liaison so we can uh, exchange some idea about what's a project, what's a possible project they can do. And then during the spring semester, then maybe uh, liaison could uh, meet with stu student either by Zoom or in person or exchange the emails to give students some feedback about the project or give some uh, guidance or provide some data. 
And at the end, we hope the student can provide solution, okay? By solution, it not means the perfect solution that solves the problem, maybe some approach, okay? Uh, you can see by May the, tw uh, May the 12th, which is like end of the school year. Okay. So this is a, the project we are looking for. Great. Are you looking for more than one or just one project? One or more than one. Because we have I have several that came through my head while you were talking right now. So. All right, that's perfect. Or maybe if we, uh, I, this sounds like a, a great collaboration between yes. your department and SUNY Fredonia and the Village of Fredonia that yep. would assist us, but it would also provide projects us. for your students. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 It also give us the uh, like opportunity because uh, we all know the uh, enrollment are declining. So if we can build a strong applied math program, maybe that can attract more students. Mm -hmm. And obviously the more people that sign up for the class, the more projects you guys can hopefully exactly. solve for us. Yeah, so it's a good cycle. So Professor Chang, and I'm going to butcher this name, so I apologize, but I had lunch or breakfast with Joseph Carafa, Professor Carafa, and we were discussing uh, ways that the, the village could collaborate with the college. Um, and you know, we, we talked about their environment, maybe having the environmental studies student, environmental studies student, students look at um, some of our uh, infrastructure and see if we could be more eco-friendly yeah, for, for, okay, have they already talked to you about that? We talked about that, about maybe some biology students examining the runoff dish, ditches to see if we have the right vegetation there, but we were just kind of, you know, kind of uh, brainstorming about uh, different ways that we can get students involved with the community, and we thought that this would be a, a good way to do it. Yeah. And, and I think that what you're discussing fits in there very nicely. Yeah. So I don't know if you want to touch base with him because he was going to speak sure. to some of the other professors yeah. and like see who would be interested in getting involved in that. Yeah. So Sounds I like might recommend idea. that you do that. Else from the board. I hope the board would feel that this would be a great opportunity to maybe just. And I would love to be the liaison because I've already had breakfast with him. So yeah, if you need you one, <laughs> what's yeah. that? I, said, yeah, there you go. I think this is a great thank opportunity you. to help us understand mm -hmm. some of our yeah. problems, if not solve All kinds problems. of time. <laughs> maybe this would, uh, you know, may, maybe move things along, and actually, it might actually uh, help us with the state with different uh, funding opportunities to. Uh, move forward too so any any other comments from the board I would I hope the board would love to move forward on this initiative like I said I could see several projects that we don't necessarily you know I, I would love to do a study of the, the the pressures in our water system and what you know what's more likely to cause you know if we turn down pressures whether we'd be able to less likely to blow lines or yeah. you know there's a lot of different things that we can look at stuff like that so I'd be thrilled to have yeah, definitely. somebody analyze or different stuff like that and, you know so yeah definitely absolutely. we can definitely have students like a study together to came up with some sort of a view not necessarily the solution but a better view yeah yeah I mean we're, we're looking at hiring engineers to do a lot of studies but this is maybe something that we can do yeah so our math student may be like a part of the project yep there yeah. Trustee Linden or Trustee Twitchell, I like the idea. Right. Yeah. Thank you, ladies, Thank you. very much Thank you for the presentation. Please reach out to us if you have any questions. It's nice to see two women in STEM, too. So. <laughs> Do we have your contact information, or can you give us some before we you leave? We can provide tonight? that. Thank you. I actually don't have a current business card. Yeah, I don't have my. <laughs> We've got well, we recently moved to Houghton. Yes. <laughs> like different uh, building. This is my old business card. It's outdated by my email and phone number is still we, we have yeah I think we all have your email, email mm -hmm. from all the things, so. I'll take okay. a card yeah, they put us thank you email, so thank you very much I have an outdated card I can certainly <laughs> share <laughs> thank you but yes it is now outdated all right thank you very much thank, thank you, you. Okay. and you're not required to stay here for the rest of the meeting if you ladies have you'd like to go you may go or you might want to see how things go later on. That's very interesting. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. We'll move on. Thank you. We'll move on to resolutions. Number one, fill the boot drive approval. Any comments? We're still on the workshop. We're still on the workshop. Yep, yep. I will. I will. When we're at the meeting, I'll. No. Sorry. When it's time, we'll do the. So, any questions or comments on fill the boot? That's. Uh, I shouldn't interfere with the other things that are going on. It's on this nope. intersection here. Nope. 
Great it's all good. Hold it. See, Next weekend, yeah. Day. Excellent. Yeah. Memo from Village Hall staff requesting days off there at the end of the year. Traditionally. Columbus Day and after Thanksgiving. And yes. it's traditionally right. been given to them, so it's it nothing has. new. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. Approval of handicapped parking. I think we discussed that quite in mm -hmm. length. Yep. Budget transfer. Which is this one for? There's um, new ones that were passed out. You all got the updated one? The one from, from the ARPA funding. Oh, okay. Okay. Yep. Yep. Yes. Perlissa, also, uh, not necessarily, sometime tomorrow, if you give email me an update of where we are with the funding and what, what we've used uh, currently funding uh, for. So I just have an idea, please. Okay, uh, approval of ductless AC system in the trustees' room. If anybody <laughs> yes, does not <laughs> like think that's a great idea. Anybody that's sitting here sweating, yeah. Thank you. Oh, I disagree. You can disagree all you want back there. <laughs> your, your equipment's frying in here. We're going right to send now. you down the basement anyways. Good, thank you. I don't know what I did with it. Uh, budget transfer, and this is for the tractor. Approval of tractor plow. Any questions? Oh, hold on. Have, so we have to read. We have to rescind. Yes, that okay. one first. Yeah, yeah, first the others are rescind. Uh, yeah, it has to be rescind. done prior to these other resolutions for the tractor because the cost. Budget transfers. That so we'll right. put between five and six. We'll put their rescind uh, resolution in there. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep, so we send that budget transfer to appropriate the funds and then the approval of the actual tractor. Okay. Approval of bond contract with municipal solutions. Um, yeah. Um, you know, the, um, the resolution says 3500 but their contract said it increased 3500 to $6,500. We're not but, sure what that's about because yeah. the email said 3500 also. So we're pro we probably should table this so I can contact yeah. Jeff. Okay. And, and Erlis and I talked, and she's not in love with it, Municipal Solutions anyway, and so she's looking for maybe an alternative. So I think if we have time, I think we should give her time to explore that, maybe find a better company to work with. What issues have you been having? <clears throat> We didn't. We had an issue when the water treatment plant bond didn't go through properly. The wastewater bond didn't come through. I waited for this bond. Um, okay. He never said he wasn't working on it until I checked in with him, and then he told me he wasn't working on it or hadn't been working on it. So okay. I was like, okay. he yeah, didn't I'm, say I'm anything. Of, <laughs> yeah, I, I guess I'm so, maybe somewhat, but. Sign exactly what's day to day mm -hmm. right on it. So thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. <coughs> resolution approving local law number four. Resolution approving local law number five. Was there any other resolutions that were that I walk in there that we need to include? Uh, the last, most recent one was the rescind, rescind rescinding. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's right. it for resolutions. Yes. Okay, thank you. We'll move on to new business. Opera House staircase by the loading dock. Uh, um, to Twitch, we'll you that up. Yes, I met with Rick Davis last week, and um, I sent everyone photos. I hope they all got them. Yes. John, did you get them? Yes. Oh, good. Yeah. I know sometimes we have problems with you, your email. You got the E in there that time. <laughs> I know. <so. laughs> <laughs> and um, <coughs> they really are in bad shape, and we really do need to. The village would be the one to find money to fix it because. He said he'd be responsible for inside the opera house, but uh, the village board would be responsible to find monies for the outside of the building. And right now, um, he just brought it to my attention, so we're going to have to look for a contractor uh, to get some bids on repairs on that because uh, they, they are pretty seriously getting rusted out. And, you know, they, they could use another door right now. But, um, you know, every time in the winter time when they throw salt down, I mean, it, it, it just eats it away even more. And uh, I think, uh, you know, if, if I could talk to Travis about it and possibly maybe work with him to find monies to help us fix that. Okay. 
Yeah. Might we have to put on an RFP or RFP? Yeah. Should we put out an RFP? Right. RFP? Uh, well, which one would be more appropriate? One of the two for contractors to exactly. submit. Exactly. Right. To submit a proposal. Proposal yeah. for. So we said right. How much we're going to need to spend. Mm -hmm. Well, see, we don't know how yeah. much it is yet. Right. right. I, I think mean, at this point, I mean, it, if it comes in below the procurement policy of under 30000 then at least we have, uh, you, know, you can say, you did your due diligence. and He, uh, he couldn't even give me an estimate because he, he, he doesn't know the cost of yeah, so I, yeah. things like that. So I was hoping to uh, maybe got, get in contact with uh, Carpella. I know he's done some work before. He did work last time, he said, on the staircase. Well, so I, I think since it's a much bigger project, we're probably safer just putting it out to bid to make right. sure that we're not asking somebody specific and then they come back and say, well, it's going to be $50,000. Well, right. great. Right. Now we have to put it out to bid anyway. Exactly. So we well just put it out to bid. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. Mm-hmm. I guess in situations where we have no idea what the project would co have, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, if, if we're like replacing these five front chairs here, we know it's not going to be <laughs> over the 30,000. Mm -hmm. So, but in this instance here, or if we know it's an obvious thing, you know, like this side of the building's falling down, and we need to. <laughs> so, right. Mm -hmm. That could be done. Thank you. Thank you. Two, cope, walk to remember. I think they did this last year, I believe. They it's, did, and I can put it out for a resolution on our next meeting, if you like. Okay. Anybody have any questions on any comments? No. no. Then please do that. Is there any other new business? Um, I just wanted to ask Sean about um, Agri-America's statement that they can't fully utilize the sewer. Yeah, I don't know what that statement's all about. Okay. Yeah, I, I talked with Sean and, and I kind of suggested they he gets in touch with Agri America and okay. just talk to him and see if there's an issue there. So in the processing business, I would imagine there's things that you can put down the drain and you shouldn't. Right. Yeah. So that's probably part of it. Like the stems, right. the, uh, the I, I don't know if I'm, I'm speaking out You're about fine. that, but I think that's probably what it is. Okay. So, so it's not necessarily something we should be yeah, handling. It's, it's something that's that on there. We told them. Okay. Yeah. And that, totally sure that's and that's, as, as far as you know, there's there's wastewater is working fine, and there's no issue with it. Okay. okay. You well, we had a that. we had an issue too because right. Sean, didn't we receive a notice from the well in, from the state? In June, we had mm -hmm. a notice, um, a violation for a BOD mm -hmm. going for effluent going out. So that particular incident happened because I think it was the, uh, the cleaning of the either a tank or a tank in America. So we got a bunch of BOD in that particular day and it put our, our, um, our uh, testing result over the limit for the month. Mm -hmm. So and then in the recent past we had some color issue coming down too. So um, we're supposed supposed to treat the waste and, and, and it's supposed to go out and it's supposed to be clean. You know, yeah. certain parameters met. And um, I was worried last week I we had we got color in and it, it, it made the plant almost through the whole uh, to the to the final things was was colored. So so that's something to be worried about and I, I talked to the process manager about that and we talked Talk to her about that too as well. But I've been in contact with their process manager. Mm -hmm. but, um, they got to be more careful on how much of that that's got to be put down because mm -hmm. if we can't treat it, it goes out untreated. We're in violation of permit. Right. It's part of the problem, and you wouldn't, you, you know. I hate to say it, we could use some I and I and some a large flow into the system, maybe. So that's the, that's the other thing. Right? You know, we're looking at we're on charted territory right now with the drought and everything. You don't want to inflow your sewer system, right? But no, but what's no. going on? Our right? right. flow is like way below a million gallons a day at, at times. So it's it's yeah, it's it's kind of a double edged sword on how that works mm -hmm. out. Might with the college being back right now, that might kick it up right. quite a bit. Okay. Thank you. Any other new business? I put the 
we had sent out an RFP for the roofing. Mm -hmm. uh, we only received one after the initial one from Sarah. Okay. So I put that in everybody's box. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, uh, move on. Can I? And we've exceeded the time limit, right? Yes, that, was, that ended on Friday. So yeah. We'll be right. Okay. Move on to old business. I just would like to bring up uh, everybody was provided with an RFP for engineering services. Did everybody have a chance to look over that? And can we put out that RFP and get it going? We need to come up with a date at the bottom. I mean, I can do that, but I, the board can. Yeah, there were a couple other items he left blank. And he wanted us to yeah. fill them in, I think. One was budget constraints that we're going to have to decide. And and I, you know, my first thought was um, the, um, the way we were billing or having Patriot bill us was that was per Job. time that it helped us out, right? Yes. It was per visit or whatever. Per DM or yeah. Like that. Yeah. Yes. Something like that. I think that this RFP is, is too general in nature. I think we should have a more direct approach. Um, we have so many studies um, already. We have so many studies already available that there be some need to be updated. Some are in process. Um, <coughs> And um, particularly with the, the wastewater treatment plant, um, there's already an engineering company working on projects and that, that more than likely wouldn't be able to move forward until some of the current projects are completed. Uh, I just, or Alyssa had you know, explained that a little bit better. Yes, Wendell's working on finishing up their engineering study to complete that project there. We haven't, they haven't finished their engineering portion down there yet, so we're not even sure what direction we're going for work that way. So Trustee Linda, can you clarify the many projects that, that we got have going on, engineering studies that we already have? Can you clarify that? Like the, like the dam study. Um, there's, one. there's been uh, reservoir studies, volume going metric studies. Um, Those are all dated. They, but they, yeah, but there's studies that have been done that all they need is, is to have some updates. Um, but what we should do is, is a more direct approach um, as a village would be to um, at this point, because uh, we already had recommendations, we already have lists of recommendations of, from the department heads and, and such, and from other studies, of uh, what items should be next in line. Um, the department heads know that for sure. And um, what we should be doing now is, is now looking towards what grants may be in line in, into the into the nearest a reasonable future that can be that uh, we can provide a study for and, and I'm putting an RFP out directly for that particular project I don't and as opposed to going out to as opposed to going out and, and, and trying to get a company that first of all we we don't we're not are we hiring are we yes uh, you're gonna you want to hire as a, as a whole company and, and pay them to to have Many, many studies um, uh, uh, looked at and have set aside um, at what costs. We're currently $6.5 million in debt. We don't have a whole lot of money to work with. And, and so, and we're in the- we $6.5 million of debt. Yeah, we, our that's debt's, our debt. That's our debt. But our debt service. Our debt yeah. service is $6.5 million. Okay. Right, and so we, we need to be, uh, and, and we also have a, a deficit in our budget. And um, so we need to be careful. Yes, it seems like we have a lot of money in these departments, but there isn't that much money in water available above our um, limit. And then there's, um, and at the uh, wastewater treatment plant, there's very large projects that are being attended to, and they're currently being attended to. We should look at um, the grants that are, that are the, the, whether it be, um, state grants or whatever um, and see what the criteria is for those grants first and see can we apply and should we apply for engineering studies Jim and that's why we have to no, the engin on this. engineering studies are something that's that is now currently these days it didn't used to be but now these days they require a study of, of, of the project 
and, the, and then the possible costs involved with the, the project. Um, we've had studies that have gone nowhere um, because we didn't have the time or money to get to it or the ability to get to it or, the, or didn't get any grants for it. I mean, we currently have a, um, the study out there uh, that we, we the engineers we, we, uh, we hired for the, the dam, excuse me, the dam, um, but has there actually been um, requests from the state um, or the federal government for, for um, grant funding for that. Um, is, the, is there the understanding of what the criteria is? And is there the um, timeline on those grants? Do we know what those grants are? I know that um, you spoke of, the mayor spoke of one from the county. We haven't heard anything back from. Um, but what other opportunities there are out funding. there? There was funding. It wasn't grant opportunity from the county. Okay. It was funding so it was opportunities funding. Okay. for... Okay. For engineering studies, right. you're talking about criteria, Jim. You're missing the process. The process hold here. On, hold on, hold on. I, I get what you're saying. No, hold, we no need excuse to, me. Let, 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 let yeah. finish, please. I, 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 I hear where you're ridiculous. coming so, from, Jim, that no, where we need to be controlling this meeting. looking at what projects we have already ready to go, where are we going to get the funding. Mm -hmm. yeah. I agree with right. you. I 100% yeah, right. agree with Throw you that we need that we need very specific <laughs> engineering, no. probably very specific engineering firms for those sure. projects and for, but I also think that having an engineer of record that can kind of assist us, like our last engineer of record did with the dam, looking at all of those studies, because we're not engineers, we don't necessarily know what we're looking at all the time. I think having somebody that we can rely on and look to for smaller projects is incredibly beneficial. I think there wouldn't be any downside to having somebody that we can call, that Scott can call, that Allie can call, or Sean can call and say, hey, can you come take a look at this? What do you think? Or that we can call and say, hey, this is what Dunkirk's engineer said. What do you think? If, if, I, don't, I don't think there's a downside to that. If Scott were here, he would tell you how many times he called uh, Rex and got assistance from him. Right. And, and I think that's what we're not looking for. I think that's why Rex isn't yeah. doing it. No, that, he wasn't getting paid No, for that is not job. why. I know. That, that, I, I, that, I that is specifically not, not why so Rex well. is no longer working for us. Yeah, that's specifically not that. why. Yeah, I just want to say, like, I'm sure Sean agrees and Scott would too because we talked about it. We, we're not engineers either. You know, we don't right. know what's what sometimes. I mean, I can read the you know three proposals and I don't maybe not understand them. I mean, the dam is pretty straightforward, but with some new stuff, there may be not something I understand. It would be nice to have somebody to ask questions that's on the village's side. And and that's yes. what this was that's replacing the agreement we had with Patriot. Had yes. Yeah, it, it wasn't. It wasn't for specific. No. Yeah, it wasn't an RFP for specific. It's replacing. It was yes. replacing for to replace. Okay. Rex. And so the so the RFP. What what are they expected to reply to when it comes to how we're going how we're going to pay them? Um, that, that wasn't in there. Is it? Is it right. That, you want to pay him an hourly rate? Nothing was oh, that. That's discussed. That, that's, what, that's what he's asking. Here. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, that, that's, yeah that's what, what we're what being we asked to, to decide now. how we would reimburse them for a, a retainer call fee or mm -hmm. a quick visit to the village to look at something. Yeah. Because, right. like, like Ali said, she can look at mm -hmm. it or read it or know there's a problem, but you know. Look at this, like our legal services yeah. here. Okay, same difference. They're not. We're not requiring them to be specific in anything particular, but they provide us with an overall legal services on anything we need. Same we we don't happen to have the contract we did with the Patriot. I have it. That, yeah. Not on me. I okay. have it. But we, we also had blank work orders in that file. Right. And that was what we filled out, and that's right. how he was built. So, so we okay. might want to look at the mm -hmm. language that we use in there as far as payment and reimbursement goes. Yeah, yeah. probably match it. Mm -hmm. I just feel they're continually putting us off. Well, uh, Rex, this, Jim, excuse me. That's the last time I'm going to be interrupted. <coughs> like the, the project that Scott had on Chestnut Street. It wasn't fully engineered. It was a last-minute thing. If Rex could have handled that and, and, and gave it a full engineering study, we could have got that grant opportunity. But there's a process. You identify the project. You, you contact your your engineers, they do an engineering study on it, they get it shovel ready, our grant 
uh, writer person, which is Travis, he coordinates with the engineers of what grants are available and when and what could be up applicable to these projects, and you move forward on them. But if we, if we keep sitting here and spinning our wheels and saying, no, this isn't right, you need, and, and you need think, to move forward here. I think that brings up an issue that we're going to have to deal with eventually is um, I don't recall the last time we were awarded a grant. And there were opportunities, I think, that we missed. Were, were missed. Mm -hmm. And we need to get to the bottom of why we keep missing those. Or we don't get okay, them. Even, even it's called right here, an engineer, to be able to give us engineering stuff. Even when they've been submitted. But I, I think that's neat. That's something we need to take that a look at. Even when they've been submitted, you're correct. And the, and the, and the, the issue at hand is largely due to not understanding the grants and what you're applying for and the criteria that's based um, and, and necessary to receive that grant. So if you know that ahead of time and when the time frame is, then you can say you, you might have two, two or three uh, projects, one maybe one bigger and one littler, but, but there's no grants for the bigger one at this point in time. So the little one may have that grant available and then you have the criteria and everything to ask the engineering company to, to provide for that grant. If we have an engineer on record on staff, yeah. that They're speeds up that process. It doesn't take us six volts of every two weeks to handle that. Well, we just go to that engineer. If you're not a planner or a but grant specialist here, Jim, you should be able to walk us through this process. We should be getting these, these grants and these projects moving forward. But you're not going to, we can't ask, ask um, this particular person to do all, all of our engineering for, like specifically for us because um, we're not. You, yeah. you would have, That's not you the would, case. You're, you're, you're right. So you're kind yeah. of redundant yeah. in costs. Um, so, uh, so if you have an engineering that you put an RFP out for a project, then they can come in and, and, and based on everything of the needs of the, of the facility or whatever it may be, um, um, but also um, consistent with the needs of a grant, it's knowing that we're, this is what we're going to apply for. You know what this person, this uh, whatever engineering firm can do? You know the questions this board had about the meter drive pumping station and you not believing the engineer from the city of Dunkirk? This is what this person would do. He would give us his opinion on the situation and you would believe him. Interesting you brought that up is, is, is that we had an engineering company who completed the project. Did, they did the project. Why are we not just asking the company who, who, who provided the incomplete engineering with all of the understanding of Dunkirk and they completed the project to, to the specifications to ex maybe further explain to the people who don't understand what, this, what that pump station can do. Um, that, that's what, what that's, we should be asking them. Based on what you've done and what you've provided us, could you further explain how this provides us with all the necessary needs of what, what we expected from this pump station when it used to get X amount and now we anticipated this amount of volume? That's the engineering company. We've already paid them. Why do we need to pay the somebody services out? are done. We are no longer, they have no, you'd be hiring them back to answer to, your questions to, so. to provide the answer to what they, uh, why would they, why would they charge you to answer the, provide you an answer to just to clarify what they've actually com completed? Are we any longer, Alyssa or, or Ann, uh, in, in contract with uh, Rambo? Rambo, not to my knowledge. Not that we no. know. I oh. just say I have asked them questions for reports in previous years, and they're already difficult to work with because mm -hmm. they're not our they're they're not contracted. They barely they reply to my emails looking for past things. So any, any more information, you'd be paying them just like, so just let's move forward, figure out how you want to pay these people, put that in the request for proposal, per hour, per diem, whatever, however the past contract was with Patriot, I think it was probably a per hour uh, fee, just like we do with our legal services, it's a per hour. Right. Very simple. And, and to be determined date. Projects. You and get answers on Vineyard Drive, you get answers on a, a second, uh, uh, water tank on you know, your Stockton Road. You get answers maybe, uh, Allie, on on the water tank on Webster Road, what's going on with that, or you know, whatever. Let's That's move nice forward. Okay, we beat that horse long enough. Any other old business? Uh, yes, I was gonna talk about complete streets. Okay. And I believe Chip has a PowerPoint for us. Oh, great. 
So we just want to make it clear to everyone. Can you make that screen smaller? You're you're missing some um, of the. We were good. Okay. Go ahead. We were good. Well, you know, people are concerned um, that Susan is the one that's been most vocal about it. But I just wanted to remind everybody that Nicole and I and Dave Price and Scott Marsh, we've been working with her on this for the past six months. Has, has so, anybody from the planning uh, Scott McKay. Has it then gone through the planning board and looked at this whole thing? Yeah, I mean, it's you're not technically supposed to. This is workshop. Hold, hold on, now. just well. Can let I finish? Michelle, Dave, and and myself get through, yeah. and you can Let's, answer because your question will probably be answered. Yeah, there you go. Well, the committee members, I just wanted to read them off to you. It's Nicole and I as trustees: Travis Gordon, Village Planning and Grant Writing, Urban Advantage; Scott Marsh, Supervisor of Public Works. David Price, Village of Fredonia, Chief of Police. Susan Parker, County Legislator for District 4 of Fredonia. And really, how this project started, um, it's, we're going to write a letter to uh, the New York State DOT, and we want them to consider improvements to pedestrian and bike infrastructure. And this will also help the bird riders too and we would like to do a traffic study first and foremost because we believe uh, the speed limit coming from the roundabout into Fredonia needs to be lessened to 30 miles per hour right now it's 40 miles an hour for like half a mile and it doesn't make sense because you're coming out of the roundabout where you're only supposed to be going 15 miles an hour and now you're speeding up towards Fredonia. And the same way coming down the hill, you're, you know, just beyond the hill, you're supposed to reduce your speed to 30. But as we know, a lot of people just don't <coughs> really decrease their speed at that point. Could I, could I say something real quick? I'm, I'm not interrupting. And, okay. But, but it seemed like I just saw an email where the New York Conference of Mayors, the governor gave municipalities That's true. the ability Hochul did give us that ability yeah, so to lower the speed limit on our own so we could yeah we could do that yeah. on our own but I'm, I'm just going over yeah. what we were looking yeah. at okay I didn't mean it but thank but, you yeah. though that that is a good point John mm -hmm. and we have suggestions for changes to be considered um, we have a New York State DOT maintenance plan Mill and fill and investigate pedestrian improvements in the work zone. Uh, current status, future development. Construction expected to begin in spring in 2024. And the construction is expected to be completed in spring 2025. And the projected cost is $1,950,000. And just to give an idea, um, we talked about how we could uh, continue having a bike lane, a safe bike lane going all the way up to the school. I think that's it in the next. Can I just ask a question on the cost? Sure. That's a complete cost of redoing Route 20 from the roundabout to yes. the village line? One, the no, roundabout no. cost $3 million. No, this is for Route 20. Route, can I? Yeah, <laughs> Route right from the roundabout to the western edge of the village right. is what they're going to do. I thought this was going to be like a complete reconstruction of the Absolutely road. Absolutely not. No. Wow. no. Wow. That's why just... we're going to suggest, make suggestions. We'd like to slow down this traffic, downtown Fredonia. We'd like to put up a, a, an area where people can cross safely. Uh, and so they can stand in the middle of the road and wait for traffic to pass by so they can cross the rest of the road safely. And um, I'm sorry, I don't have a picture of, of that. There uh, should be a point. There should be one there, Chip, but I don't, I don't I see it. She's, she's five pictures. That's okay. That's okay. Well, we can re review that at another time because I think a lot of people are confused about this. 
because um, I know we talked about medians, and uh, and the thing is, you know, at, at first I I didn't like the idea about mediums downtown because I thought well it would be right down the center of the road like let's say from forest to center, but we're thinking of doing shorter areas and. And the other thing is about the uh, curbs, the, the way the curbs would be set Going. would be. <laughs> yes. Well, the fire trucks could safely turn around those and um, come down the other side of the street. But more importantly, we really want to make it safe for pedestrians and for People just to take their time coming through the village and uh, for bike safety and I, I believe Dave Price would have something to back me up on on our ideas about that. Well, the Complete Streets Initiative primarily started about seven months ago when we had a town hall meeting downstairs and the goal was to try and make the goal was to try and make it a more pedestrian friendly village and incorporate all the bike traffic that we had. I mean, you had a panel invited by legislator Parker who answered questions in the opera house. And what we learned that day was that within the next two years, you're going to see a $2 million reconstruction of route 20 here from East line to West line. And the only time you can really make changes is when they do their scheduled construction. So Susan, excuse me, Legislator Parker asked us as a group if we could get together. She formed a committee so we could brainstorm ideas because I think as politicians, I think you've all fielded questions about the pedestrian safety on Route 20, how fast it is, how hard it is to navigate the streets, and there's a huge push to incorporate the bicycle lanes. Um, I think you can recognize that when they came through and reconstructed this piece of highway 25 years ago, we're fortunate enough that we have a very wide highway. We're not struggling to find highway. We're in some municipalities Buildings are built so close together that you can't even have the problem we have. Well, what we're finding now is with the construction that has come through, there's been a couple of times they've restriped, reconfigured this highway, and now our pedestrians are having a hard time getting across the street, no matter what age you are. Um, we've identified that there are spots in our highway that are seven, 70 feet wide. Um, you go to the east side and west side of town, we have a center turning lane that is kind of useless when you're trying, because there's no bike lanes. So we're, you know, as a group, we're not engineers, but as a group, we're, we're recognizing that if the state is going to invest money in our village, we have to ask them today to start planning for two years from now. So that's what we're doing. We're not engineers. We're, we're here to, listen, I think we can recognize what we have isn't working. We need change. We're asking, we want to send a letter to ask the state to speak with us prior to your restriping, restructuring, and implement ideas that are taking place all over this state to make it a more pedestrian, vehicular, bicycle friendly roadway. We should be able to incorporate all that within what we have. I think if you take a look, and this isn't planned, we were discussing this seven months ago, but if you take a look in Dunkirk on Route 5, the other state highway that bisects this county, I think they're doing what we're asking for. And we just want to be in the conversation, be in the planning stage. We're the ones that live here. We see how the traffic is. We see how the, we see the problems this village face. I mean, we're unique. We're a little different than Dunkirk. 
Route 20, which carries the most traffic of any roadway through this village, bisects our village, it bisects our business district, it bisects parks. So we need to make this safer. And it's asking the state to involve your planning, your engineers with us, recognizing that we're trying to slow traffic down, recognizing that and investigate where bump outs may help, pedestrian islands. It, it might be something as simple as striping, taking that center lane away, giving us two drive lanes, and then we incorporate the bicycle lanes. But you're right, the engineers are the ones that can make this safer. And, and that's what's been being discussed. It's not, right. we're not engineers trying to make decisions for the village, we're trying to solicit the state to get us involved for planning for that $2 million project. And if they come in here and hear us and they recognize we may need more money, they're the only ones that can give it to us. So if, we're, if we wanna solicit more money, I see that as the opportunity also because they only come through every 10 to 15 years and do this major reconstructuring and striping. Yeah. So if we don't start planning now, we'll miss this opportunity and we will have today's problems for decades to come. So that, that's what we're trying to do. It's, we're not making decisions, we're just trying to get the state to work with us and help us improve this. We're trying to get vehicular, pedestrian, and bicycles safely through this village so that we can get to the north from the east side to the west side safely. Um, that's all. That's kind Thank of where we're at. You. Thank you, Chief, Chief Price. Mm -hmm. Because as, as we spoke about this morning, all the parking is over on the other side of the street. So people are always complaining, well, if I want to go downtown, there's limited parking. So I can park in, in one of the lots, but to cross the street, people don't feel safe about it. I know myself, even Nicole, has experienced people that almost run you over. And I'm pushing and a stroller. She's quick. <laughs> and she's and got I'm a quick. stroller with a baby, you know. And, you know, I, I mean, even, you know, we experience this problem. And um, Legislator Parker has worked with us on this, and uh, we've discussed some of these ideas. And I, I believe you have someone to introduce tonight, Nicole. Yep. So first, I'm gonna um, our DPW supervisor Scott Marsh had a couple of things that he he couldn't be at this meeting, but he wanted a couple of things noted. Um, he said there are a couple of things I'd like to mention about Route 20 projects. The first thing is that the state is responsible for plowing and taking care of the road on Route 20. Their local garage and plows are, on, are in Fredonia, so Route 20 in the village always gets plowed. Our village DPW pushes the snow back in the village parking spaces on Route 20, but other than that, the state takes care of the road. If the Department of Transportation plants greenery or trees, the village would be responsible for maintenance of the plantings. We talked in committee about this. My preference would be to have fewer and simpler plantings to reduce the maintenance of the medians and pedestrian safety islands. I would also, report, I would also support lowering the speed limit on East Main from 40 to 30. I'm in support of submitting a letter asking for the DOT to make changes to make it easier to cross the street in Fredonia. I'm in support of anything that would improve our village and make Fredonia a safer place for ourselves and our children. And we also have uh, Shelly Wells here to answer any questions that you guys might have. She's kind of a, a, a complete streets Experience. person. <laughs> yes, yes. So she's worked um, with Health and Human Services, and she's worked with the Planning Department and City and Village <coughs> Leadership Boards for almost 10 years. So. I have, I have a question. How likely is it that DOT would be um, open to the concerns you might have and changes that we might want to make to their plan? I mean, or are they coming in and saying this is the way it's going to be? And no, okay. so I would say what you're doing is exactly the process you should be doing. So New York State has a complete streets policy. Chautauqua County has one, and so does Fredonia. So what that means is whenever there's a roadway project, you've kind of said, uh, we will look at all the options. And we're not obligated. We look at the cost as well. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, New York State says that, so does the county. So there's nothing that says we have to do this. 
but now's the time to look at it because, right. mm -hmm. you know, like the chief said, these things, these changes happen when roadway construction is going on, and you and New York State looks at those too because they have they have that policy too. So now's the time to right. get on their radar to say, this is what we as a village want to see happen. Now, it's kind of like everything else we you know that I've listened to doesn't mean that you are going to get exactly what you want, but maybe instead of an island, maybe they're striping. I mean, we've done this in multiple places where you kind of say, here's our ideal. Here's what we'd like to see happen, but here's what would be acceptable and maybe at a lower cost. Okay. I, I first of all would like to involve the zoning and planning on, the, on any of this before we send in a formal letter to the, to the state. Second of all, I'm going to go on record saying that I'm against any center medium because with parking, on either side of the road. I, I've witnessed it a, a thousand times. Police, fire, trying to run through there and they have to scoot in the middle lane because we have no place to move over on the side of the road. If we have mediums with concrete and flowers and trees and whatever planted in there, it's gonna restrict the ability to get to an accident, to a fire, to a whatever. On top of that, we're looking at having a hospital being built at the end of the road. If we've got somebody coming from this side of town to that side of town and they have to stop to wait for a car to get out of the way because they can't go into the medium, that's the difference between life and death. I'm 99% okay, okay with slowing the traffic. If you want to put striped in the middle saying you can't turn there and all that stuff like that, but no way, shape, or form will I ever agree or vote for a system or a letter that's going to go in that's going to inhibit the ability for emergency vehicles to go through the center of town. That would and all be considered. Well, I, That but, would be. But before we send this right. letter in, it needs to be considered. And I think zoning and planning is the perfect one on here to say, okay, well, the road is this wide, the car is this, the parking space is this, how are we gonna get that fire truck through there? That's, that's what they're here for. And I think we really need to involve the fire department and the police he department. He has been well. involved, by the can way. Can I finish my statement, please? No, but I, I just wanted to Can I please know. finish my Go statement? Ahead. Go ahead. Yes, yes, they are involved, but I, I don't see anything from Ms. Chief Myers on record saying that he thinks they can fit a truck down the middle of the road. I don't see anything from Dave saying that he can come around the corner and go through a median. I think that needs to be addressed, and I think our zoning and planning is the one to do that. And before we jump into this, we need to have that parameter set down before we send a letter into the state. Okay. I really can't say anything. No, you can say something, but... Yeah, go yeah. ahead. Nobody said you couldn't. Yeah. Go ahead, Susan. Well, no, you can't just jump in there. You have to. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Um, what I'd like to say is this. Again, as um, you know, as Shelley said, and also as um, Chief Price said, we are not saying that you have to have a median. We are not saying any of those things. And so, what the typical, and maybe you could address this, Scott. Typically, if this, if the state. You've been on the zoning for the planning board for a long time, right? Yeah, six years or so. Okay. So if there is a project, the typical <clears throat> process, and maybe, Shelly, you could even answer that. It would be like um, the DOT says, I looked at the DOT project on the roundabout, and they met with, and they said, on this date, we met with all of the business owners. On this date, we met with the village. On this date, we met, and they probably came to zoning. Did they come to zoning for the, of course, that's, that's town, right? It's, it's not the village. Town. It's right. town. Have you ever had a project where the DOT has come? To the planning board? Yeah. Not while well, I was on the board. OK. okay. Do you, have you ever run into yeah, that? There's a representative from the DOT that works with our county and our area. and. I guess I, I understand what you're saying because there's been a lot of concern, like from, from people that work um, with snow plows and emergency vehicles about a lot of curb changes and those kinds of things. So, yeah. I completely, well, I'm a nurse. I get it. Like you want to save people's lives. Nobody wants to do that, but nobody would do anything in your town without looking at the roadways and saying. The, the there would be no problem with that, or you're right, we don't want to do that. Like, that's not really the, the letter our that was provided to me in the email states that we're in favor of a medium for pedestrian stopping. I'm not in favor of that. I'm, you know, so if that's in the letter, 
then that's saying to the town or to the state, okay, we're in favor of that. As a board member, I'm not in favor of that. And if we have that hospital come in three years, four years, five years from now, what we decide today is a big impact on what happens in five years. So we need to be very careful with the language that we're sending. And if it says a median that people can stop and stand on, that's a problem. It may, and so maybe it is looking at the language and deciding what you're comfortable with, you know, like investigating the ability for people to be able to stop in the middle of the road. What does that involve? I, you know, that's something beyond my scope. Of, there's lots of As examples. Chief Meyer said, if, if you paint lines and say this is non, cheap that's price. fine. Or cheap price, I'm sorry. Um, I'm fine with that. But a, a, a visible bump out in the middle of the road as shown in several of these photos, is, is going to be a major detriment to emergency vehicles. So the whole like little like side note at the bottom of all of this is it. This is what we would like if it works. If the traffic engineers right. deem it would work, and you know our police chief and our fire chief, if they think that it would work and how it would work, that's not really our role as board members as committee members well, we're that's making for, recommendations that's right we are we're, making we're sending a recommendation that looks like that they don't care about our recommendations well if, if it's <laughs> they not care included the, it's the about our request right okay so if not so if that's not, not saying, included if we're, if we're saying we don't want that that's going to weigh more on it than we we'll say we're okay with that because if it works and there are ways to get emergency vehicles around it through it on it then yeah. it works Dave. that's not for I, us I, I, I see where you are but it's a it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare that I'm not going to get on board with. And and there are other municipalities who ha who have center medians, places where cars can't go either way. I mean, like Chief Price said, it's it's happening down on Route Five right now. So it's. But we're talking within a, a we're novel. talking within eighth of a mile of our fire department and our police department. We're not talking three miles down the road or four miles around like they they put in in Dunkirk on Route Five. Can I speak again? Yep. Okay. So in the letter, just so you know, it says, I mean, and I understand, and maybe we do, I guess what one of the questions for you would be, so, and as Nicole said, as Trustee Syracuse said, um, this is not, we are saying, the DOT is not going to let us in on anything in terms of they have, you should read that document about the roundabout. I can actually send it to you. I, I understand what the deed. No, what but I do. yeah. So you understand the how exact, how exacting, and how investigative they are. And so, I think that um, here we go. So special areas in the the thing. It says special areas of concern: the Village of Fredonia Fire Station, Station 80 West Main Street. Special considerations need to be given needs to be given to fire trucks and emergency vehicles to ensure appropriate response times, possible solutions, mountable curbs at islands, discussion with the New York State DOT prior to the start of the project. I know in the project that it's written in that they have to talk to the municipality. Right. So I guess, you know, as, as, as um, Shelley said, what length, because I, I feel strongly that there's so many, um, that the DOT really are the experts. And I'll tell you something about the law that I wasn't going to say because about the pedestrian law. Okay, the pedestrian law in New York State goes like this. The people on your side of the street, on your side of the street, you're crossing here and you're going, they have to stop. Right. You get to the middle. The people, while you're crossing that half of the street, the other people can continue. So then you have to get to the middle of the street and then wait for them to stop going the other direction. That's the way that the law works. So inferred in the law is you might get stuck in the middle of the street. And I would have to say that one of the biggest, and a lot of these little uh, islands, you can make a small, you know, they have certain dimensions and then part of it can be painted. It can have mountable curbs. It's not like a giant something. It doesn't have it's to be. It's not necessarily that. No, it's well, not right. that necessarily. That's why I say we should be crossing at crosswalks using the papers <coughs> and it. the stoplights and everything that are there. Oh, you know, as <coughs> opposed, well. It's too wide right now. It's too, I can't even make it across. 
Well, then we need to we need to be looking at the times that it's allowed to cross the road, the speed limit. <coughs> that can be added to here, and I, but, we went through every yeah. single intersection. If we're if we're looking at having parking, a bike lane, a driving lane, and then you get a fire emergency, <coughs> we have no room on Main Street, well, and they're not talking about widening Main Street. No, I, you know, I, I think. Look, I don't know if anybody remembers when DOT came in and they were discussing the roundabout, and there were probably 50 people in this room. Everybody spoke against it. They all thought it would be a nightmare. It would never work. You'd never get a plow. You'd never Excuse get an ambulance through there. You'd never get a fire truck through there. Right. And as it turned out, none of those fears uh, came to fruition. And I think we can all admit now that most of those comments were inaccurate. It's probably a heck of a lot safer going through the roundabout so I guess what I'm saying is we need to keep an open mind to any suggestion the DOT would have and not cut anything out at this point because if it was unsafe um, they wouldn't allow it to happen in my Mr. Mayor, Dave yeah. Yeah. Just, with the permission of the board I'm, I'm the chairman of the planning board and uh, I think we have something that we can offer Legislator Parker and um, <clears throat> Gordon came in and presented a uh, briefing to us uh, the 19th of last month. And it was comprehensive, and, but it was a work in progress. Um, one of the, I think one of the things that most of the board members came away with, we were, we were devolving to discussions of solutions. We, we know we have problems, we know we have issues. And rather than on, focusing on what is our problem, I mean, they, we need bicycle lanes. We need to take a look at the speed limit around the school. Uh, I mean, the, the traffic, pedestrian traffic up around the school. And all of a sudden, we would get into something, well, if we did this, then that would fix it. Maybe, maybe not. We don't have traffic engineers available to us. I don't know that we have, we don't have a traffic study. Okay, we don't know what the volume of traffic is. I, I'm sure the chief of police could give us a good estimate. But, and it's, it's happening tonight, in my opinion. Instead of focusing on what are we trying to solve, what safety do we want to bring to the village, we're talking about solution. the tools we're gonna to do it, the solution. I think the solutions are going to be decided by the better engineers, and they're the ones the DOT has. Okay, and the letter has has been revised. The latest copy that I read, much more focused on um, this is the problem we got to fix. These are the things we want you to recognize as issues. And then there is some in there, some things in there, but in passing, simply in passing, you know, something like this or this might work. Um, but the, folk, the conversations, my board did it, other people around town do it, it devolves into solutions. And I think the solution is because solutions are tangible. You can touch them. Okay. Concepts, worries about safety and all that, that's more abstract. What do you, what do you think about the possibility of the hospital down the road if we, I mean, that's got to be looked at as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know we had a there's major no, there's traffic a, study on that. I still yeah, have a copy of it. Yeah, there's nothing mentioned in the in the letter we're sending them about a possible hospital coming into the area. Well, we pretty, you know, I think that got addressed pretty solidly um, when we were doing the site plans initially. And then we had a, an update of the site plans the last month as well, I believe. And their attorney made the point. They had gone back to DOT to, to validate the uh, their traffic study that was done up there because we were worried about the traffic in the hospital. And DOT came back and said, basically, um, yeah, things dropped off traffic-wise during COVID, but it's coming back up. But it, the demographic is such now, it's not coming back with the volume we thought. So if you want to use a traffic study, you know, you can use the old one. I mean, that was all they said. I'm not comfortable with that myself. I would like to see a traffic study of some kind, mm -hmm. which then gives us an idea of the volume and the speed. Well, with, with a focus on the possibility of that hospital being built as well. Well, yeah, I have to, as, as the chairman of the planning board, I have to say that, yeah. Yeah. 
I well, expect it will be, and I hope it will. Can, hold on. Yeah, yeah, but okay. so I'm, I'm finished, and I appreciate the long it takes. No, thank you. Hold on, Dave. Before, I mean, when the slide came up that this was $1.9 million from east end of town to the west end of town, I'm very surprised because the roundabout was like about $4 million. Yes. So I'm just thinking, given the, the budget of this project, that there's nothing that they're going to probably include that's going to be extravagant. I mean, you're probably talking more striping, which is simple, cheap paint, cheap. Given the, the budget of this project, I mean, look, around about $4 million, paving, a million of paving and reconstructing everything, like, in a, what's the distance, about a, a mile, a mile and a half? Between, I think it's like close to two. Maybe. Almost two. Yeah. So for two miles, I'm only less than $2 million. That, I don't think we're gonna, you're going to see extra stuff that's going to cost another half million dollars. Well, unless the state decides to change the plan and add an extra two million to it. We need to be prepared for that. Okay. Go ahead, Dave. David wanted to say something. I'd just like to say, I think Mr. McKay is 100% accurate in, in what he just stated. As, we, as I stated, we're trying to be prepared for this. There needs to be a study. To, we need to voice our concerns to New York State. Obviously, they're the engineers. They would recognize our concerns and hopefully do a study to address our concerns. It's nothing we can sit here and just fix over coffee. I mean, they would have to have their professionals look into that. And as, as, as far as the hospital, I'm a proponent of the hospital. It's being, we're not, we're not reducing the width of the roadway. If anything happens on that side of town, it's gonna to be with paint. So. We're, we're hoping. So ambulances and us and the fire department, we're gonna get through there. The, the, the current hospital sits in the center of a city between two lane streets, city streets. We're putting a new hospital on the corner of two, where two New York State highways intersect. I think they've addressed the concerns with entry and egress to both of those highways. And I think the hospital's gonna be fine no matter how we strike the streets. And that's well, it, just it, my opinion, but so I'm asking it, New York State so to review my, it, it, to review it, our so concerns. It, 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 so Chief Price, so basically what you're saying is we need to come up with a list of a half a dozen concerns Giving them proposed solutions is kind of useless at this point in time because so I think what we're at now is we tell the state, please involve us. We, we but what concern now does but work. This letter seems to include when they come here, solutions. I think it's been all. redacted. I think as Mr. McKay said, a lot of that's been removed. That's so the letter I got today. Did not. Was removed. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Yes, Mr. Parker. Sorry. Okay. I just wanted to say this. So in here, there are suggestions for changes. So. What if, I mean, part of what we were told by the DOT was, hey, you really have to show a level of interest and study to get some kind of result. So we spent the last seven months, you know, looking at things, investigating. You will see here it says the history of Route 20, existing conditions, vehicular, you know, reports on things. There's a whole report requesting a traffic study and why, step by step by step. So they told us, you have to prove to us that we should do any of this for you because we have this much money and you have to show us we should bring some of that to you. So that's why this is so like, looks. it's like a lot. Okay. So I guess what I'm saying is, or what I'm asking is, it sounds to me like we're focusing on this is the problem, this is what you're seeing. It's really important to have the history, the existing conditions, the rationales, but we could completely, and I'm not the whole committee, but so we could just say there are no solutions here. We are requesting complete street solutions that will help our uh, people to cross the street to make our village uh, you know more passable so people will stop here yeah. i think the whole idea is it's both economic and it's also safety right. like when you stand right outside of this door here there's a nice street here yeah. and then route 20 is part of our village just it could be very similar 
we it could be part like our whole square could be here in Village Hall to the parking lot, but now it's here, here, big road in between. I'm like I said, I'm not against the safety and making the streets safe through bike lanes and all that stuff like that. Okay. I'm against the suggestion, making solutions, the solutions that we're offering, without having studies, the hosp the future hospital, and all of that other stuff in there. So I I think that if we removed the, our solutions and sent in these are our concerns. Can I, can I offer then we let the state decide from there. Well, we're okay. asking for a traffic study in this. Right, and right. I, but, but we're I also don't... offering solutions, so I think we take those out. Well, but I think if we say, hey, we just we just want something, just give us what you got, that's not that's not what I'm That's not what I'm saying. I'm you saying wanting... we're not doing that. We're saying we want the road made safer. We're saying we want bike lanes. We say we want the speed reduced. We want saying we want a possible way to so stop are all halfway. Solutions. No, those are saying these are these are like, but we're not saying let's build medians. We're not saying let's do well. That's part of the complete streets that's program. Part Let me of it. offer this just this if you don't mind. Um, complete streets is a program that was designed and engineered um, for to make a better community. Um, it's it's not it's it's safer. Um, it, it's it's engineered. It's, this is not a um, something that somebody just recently came up with. Um, it's 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 beautification besides besides of all of this to make our community a better place mm -hmm. this has been implemented not only in new york state but all across the country many many communities and they they utilize the complete streets package uh, as a whole to as a um to be, allow what can be the engineers who highway engineers We'll take that. We agree that we're, we're, we're want to implement implement street, complete streets. They'll they can put as much of those items in there as they can afford to do, or, or, or they can be willing to do. Um, we don't necessarily have to ask for specifics, but we what we ask is that they that, that they go through the, the entire complete streets and, and give us a, what that can do for us. And and I'm and, not. And that should include if it if it means there are some medians. Maybe they would think that, that that is appropriate for the village, and it's a state highway. If me medians make sense, then the state would say medians make sense. They're not going to um, they're not going to um, put anything that would hinder any rescue or um, any type of uh, emergency. You, you say that, but they built a wall in the middle of the sidewalk right in front of MMT Bank without. That's, I mean, what does that got to do with any of this? this that wasn't consulted. That wasn't consulted with the planning board, was it? No. Nope. They can do whatever they want. So I'm, what I'm saying is, and again, I I, I think and the I, safety. I think that was an appropriate project, but that's besides the fact. That's I, I think the safety the of the streets is, is is a good thing to be looking at, but I don't think we should be giving them. This is what we would like to see. I think we should say this is our concerns. What do you think the solution is? I I think we're at the point where we just put the resolution together for authorizing Doug to sign it. Mm -hmm. And we vote how we vote. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Okay, that's, that's what you want to do. Good. Okay, move forward on that. And mm -hmm. I'd also like to see this board move forward on the RFP for engineering services as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Do we do we want a resolution for that, or do we want to? Because I know we need to discuss the the fee schedule. Don't we have to have a fee schedule. Yeah. We don't need a resolution to send one out. Okay. Yeah, but the fee schedule and the. Date to be determined. Yeah. I think. Yes, we could but I mean, I don't want to keep waiting another no, I, two I weeks or another month we could, or two yep. months to. Yeah. No, we can. Over we, think, a, well, we just need that other. Yeah, we can discuss. Yeah, I we think. Could discuss well, if that could be forthcoming within mm -hmm. the next yeah. few days, that would be fantastic. Yeah, that would be great. Not the next few right. weeks. Yeah. Okay, we really need. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, it'll go. It'll stand as is. Your letter, and it'll. Well, we can. We can re revise and we can resubmit if we can look at it. I, I if think you want to resubmit, great. If not, what you have submitted will be. Yeah. What you have submitted will be voted on. Right. Okay. Okay. To okay. move forward, I think that's okay. where we're at right now because you keep going back. Yes. I'm still saying I'd like to see our zoning and plan and take a look at it first. We, okay. Okay. We yep. did take it to the planning. <laughs> He was in on one of our meetings. Yeah, and he's well, I, he was in on one of the meetings. I got the letter this morning and the thing, so it's not like it was thoroughly reviewed by the by that. No, or I mean we went to the. I called him in May, and then when they had their planning board meeting, we went and presented.
just so you know. I mean, maybe that's not adequate, but that is what happened. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's let's okay. vote on yeah. that. Yeah. Let's, let's drop. Move on. Let's move on. Yeah. Any other old business? Hopefully not. No. <laughs> Nobody would dare see. On the list over there, John. All right. We'll move on to our meeting. That would never take you on a ride. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's, can we make this break a little bit quicker? Good evening, everybody. Called our, our regular meeting to order. I call this meeting to order on Monday, August 22nd at 9.05 p.m. Roll call the trustees. Trustee Linden. Here. Trustee Twitchell. Here. Trustee Bird. Here. Trustee Syracuse. Uh, here. Trust, and Trustee Esperson. Still here. All right, great. <laughs> Please all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Approval of the minutes, please. Whereas members of this board have read the official minutes of the Board of Trustees regular meeting of August 8th, 2022. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the board is hereby approves the minutes as entered into the official minutes and be it further resolved that the minutes, the reading of the minutes be dispensed with. Second. Second. It's been a motion and a second. Trustee Linden. Aye. Trustee Twitchell. Aye. Trustee Bird. Aye. Trustee Syracuse. Aye. Trustee Esperson. Aye. Carried. Public portion, please. This portion of the meeting is for public comment. Any member of the public wishing to speak, once recognized, shall stand at the microphone and state their name and address. Speakers will be asked to refrain from remarks that are in poor taste, slanderous, or not germane to any action taken or contemplated by the board. Now is your time if you'd like to adjust the board, please. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Kelly Welter. I live at 10 Castile Drive. Um, it's a concern that trigger treating hours, 3 to 8, is too much. Uh, I've heard, oh, I don't know from where, oh, it was on a Saturday or the, Halloween's on a Monday this year, and I think five hours is too much. I live in a busy neighborhood, and it's a lot answering my door, and I was requesting that Fredonia shorten the trick-or-treating hours. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you guys get killed up there. Yeah. If five hours is crazy. Oh. Mm -hmm. There's my new business. <laughs> it's a request, <laughs> and, I can, and I'll do, if you can do anything about it. That should be coming up in the near future, one of our future meetings of determining the time of trick-or-treating. And we are having a trunk-and-treat thing too, so 
I think we talked about this or already. The, the trunk and tree was shortened for a couple hours. Okay, yeah. trunk or tree, but not, not the hours. Not, not trunk or tree. Okay. okay. So I'm guessing if we provide a like a two hour trunk and tree thing, the kids probably really you know maybe shorten need another five hours worth of trick or whatever it is worth of trick or treat. Maybe three hours, two hours. Do you have a recommendation? I would say probably two. Three is fair. Three is we fair. We get quite a few of Dunkirk residents, or I'm oh, I know. familiar that um, people that really don't live in Fredonia, there's no rule that says you can't go to the next town. I know. Yeah. Right. But because we do get so yeah. many, and I believe it's yeah. an affluent neighborhood, yeah. I get hit. And I'm answering my door for five hours. Yeah. So, area, we pay like you know $150 right, or whatever know. worth, or $200 yeah. worth of candy. Yeah. So that's all. It's just I'm, I'm requesting okay. no, that. That's good. So three hours would be okay with you? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Most people don't care because. People don't come to their doors, so most people don't really care about it. It's five hours, but like I say, we get everybody, so yeah, five hours is too long. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, do you want anything more in the public portion? Okay, well, do we have any correspondence in the public portion? No, I don't. Then I will close the public portion. We'll move on to our Regular correspondence, please. Correspondence dated July 19th, 2022, was received from Lieutenant Tim Winters, Chairman of the MDA Boot Drive Committee, requesting permission to hold the annual Muscular Dystrophy Association Boot Drive on September 2nd, 2022. Be a result of the request to hold the annual MDA Fill the Boot Drive on September 2nd, 2022, for approximately eight hours at the intersection of Temple and Church is hereby approved. Be a further resolved that on that on-duty firefighters will remain in service and available to respond to any calls during this time period. Second. There's been a motion and a second. Trustee Linden? Aye. Trustee Twitchell? Aye. Trustee Bird? Aye. Trustee Syracuse? Aye. Trustee Esperson? Aye. Carried. Correspondence dated August 18th, 2022 was received from the staff at the Village Hall requesting some days off. Be it resolved that Village Hall offices will be closed Monday, October 10th, 2022, Columbus Day, and Friday, November 25th, 2022, the day after Thanksgiving, and that each village employee will use a personal or vacation day. Second. There's been a motion and a second. Trustee Linden. Aye. Trustee Twitchell. Aye. Trustee Bird. Aye. Trustee Syracuse. Aye. Trustee Esperson. Aye. Carried. We'll move to reports here. My report. It's been a busy few weeks here in the village, so I have quite a few items to report. I'll be real quick. First off tonight, I would like to welcome all the SUNY Fredonia College students back to Fredonia. I want to wish you all much success in the upcoming school year. I hope you enjoy all that the campus has to offer and that our community has to offer. Welcome back. Yesterday, the lower pavilion at Russell Joy Park was dedicated in memory of late trustee Roger Pecos. Roger's family and friends were present as the plaque in his honor was unveiled in the pavilion. Roger passed in 2020 while serving his community as village trustee. Roger has been a volunteer fireman for many years and has been the director of the Parks and Recreation Department for our community in the past. Roger was a vital member of our community when he passed and we will be forever grateful for his dedication to Fredonia. On Friday, the Fredonia Pomfret courtroom was formally dedicated to the late Judge David Prince. His family, peers, and his community members gathered to honor Judge Prince for his many decades serving our community. Three plaques will be placed in his honor in the courtroom and outside at the entrance way. Many kind words of remembrance were said during the ceremony. The world is a better place having had Dave serve on the bench here in our community for so many years. As part of the Central Connections Initiative, the three communities have received pianos this past week from the Fredonia Street Piano Project under the direction of Mark Levy. Uh, Fred, uh, Fredonia, place their piano in the Barker Commons, and I encourage everyone to check it out and play a tune or two if you can. Music connects to all of us, and now these pianos connect the village of Fredonia, the city of Dunkirk, and SUNY Fredonia. Many thanks to all involved, and I can't wait to hear the music in Barker Commons. This past week, the final Fredonia Pomfret Recreation Department presented the movie The Lion King. The music series and movies for the season have ended. I want to say how much I enjoyed the music in the park series this season, and the bands were just fantastic. A big thank you to Rec Director Kayla Sullivan and Trustee Dave Bird and Todd Langworthy for all their hard work and dedication to these Wednesday nights. The food and music were absolutely outstanding. I can't wait to see what is in store for next year's music in the park series. The music continues this weekend as we welcome the Fredonia Farm Festival back to Barker Commons. The festival begins Friday and will end after the Grand Parade on Sunday. The village is looking forward to the festival after a hiatus due to COVID 
and we are excited to see all the vendors and entertainment that the festival has to offer. Good luck and thank you to Festivals Fredonia who works so hard to put on these festivals in our community. See you at the festival. On Sunday, August 14th, a delegation of Fredonia firemen and friends of Kurt Madum traveled to the Erie County Fairgrounds to honor him as Fireman of the Day at the fair. Volunteer Fire Chief Kurt Madum was honored with a ceremony complete with a marching band and a processional, and I honored him with a proclamation for his many years of service to our community. What an honor for Kurt to be recognized at the Erie County Fair, and we were honored to be part of his, of his special day. Congratulations to Kurt Madum. Also on Sunday, August 14th, I attended a Court of Honor ceremony for Boy Scout Troop 267's newest Eagle Scout, Samuel Bowers. Sam did a wonderful service project in Silver Creek, renovating the Mount Carmel Funeral Chapel. Congratulations to Sam on his many accomplishments and becoming the newest Eagle Scout here in our community. I attended a American Legion Post 59 annual picnic since my last report. Our Legion is very active in our community and we had a very nice time at the picnic. The next Central Connection bike ride will be held on Saturday, August 27th at 10 a.m. The ride will start on SUNY Fredonia campus at parking lot number 27 uh, near the SUNY Fredonia track and we'll travel to the Dunkirk Pier. Please join us. It's always free and there's no registration to attend and helmets are strongly encouraged. Dust off your bike and ride with us before the summer and the rides are done. There will be one more scheduled ride after Saturday's ride and that will be held in September. Thank you, and that's all I have for tonight. Trustee Linden. Um, just just one, one thing real quickly. <clears throat> Before the vote on the, on the water, um, ironically, the, the, um, the proposal from the SUNY Math, um, Mathematical Sciences Department had included a, a sample that um, had to do with the water um, uh, study that uh, they did, and uh, it was proposed anyhow. Um, it said that they, um, would project a revenue generation that um, that would um, uh, um, be possibly tiered. Now, ours is the, our proposal is tiered um, in a way to um, help um, larger users, but there's what they proposed was actually a tiered system that would um, create in, um, incentives to conserve uh, water, um, and but ours would also at the same time, as it said. Um, and implement a system that is fair to the user and creates an incentive for the for the for the for the con conservation of water. Ours would essentially be be, be doing just that, um, due to the um, the base rate being removed. Because currently, with the base rate, there is no incentive um, for conservation. So this is this is a multi-tiered in um, incentive to to pass these resolutions. Uh, it does create the revenue needed to um, with, uh, to continue, keep the system moving and operational, um, but it also um, addresses uh, a number of issues. So uh, that, that's all I have to say. Are there any more reports or committees? No, no more. Mm -mm. Okay, Trustee Twitchell, please. I have nothing to report tonight. Thank you, Trustee Bird. Uh, I just want to say I received numerous emails and calls and messages just saying how great of job uh, Kayla Sullivan did with the Rex department or Rec department this summer, as well as the summer concert series. And uh, many people also commented on how nice it was to have the food and beverages and whatnot in the park over the summer. And they wanted us to relay to the board how nice it was that the board approved that. And uh, they can't wait to just see what next year brings. So just again, Next year, we're going to build on what we did, and Kayla is absolutely phenomenal what what she's doing. Okay, thank you. Trustee Syracuse. Nothing to report. Trustee Esperson. Yeah, briefly, Michelle and I went to the fire department labor um, representatives wanted to discuss uh, scheduling changes that they're considering, um, and they wanted to share that with us. At the Canvas meeting, we met with representatives from the group that is uh, contemplating opening a dispensary and I had to contact the uh, State Office of Cannabis Management to find out how we can get a, a variance waiver for distance from a park. And I haven't heard back from them yet. And as I discussed earlier, I had uh, breakfast with Professor Kafala um, to discuss ways to get um, the students more involved in the community 
and he's going to um, discuss that with some of the other professors and come up with some ideas. So that's it. Thank you. Treasurer's report. The end of July, our revenue in our general fund came in at $3.162 million. Expenses are $1,035,000. Water revenue is 198,840. Expenses are 238,820. Sewer revenue came in at 230,640 and expenses are 277,982. The general fund is up about 1.7% in revenues from last year. Um, expenses are down approximately 0.5%. Water fund revenue at the end of July was up 22.8%. Expenses are down 13.5%. The sewer fund had a 3.8 revenue decrease from last year, and expenses for that fund are up 7.4% from last year. I see our attorney fees. Are they in line with where they need to be? This, this month was high. For the last couple months, they've been right where they need to be. This month was much higher than, it was almost double the last two months. Do we know why? It's gonna, at, the, at this rate, it would put us well over 100,000 for the year, but we don't know if that's I gonna be happening. Where we spent to this too. Oh, I don't. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. mine, I attached it to yours. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. okay, so I mean, uh, that's not the norm that it has been. In no. You're right, at, Jim. At this rate, yeah, we'll be at a, a million dollars, but that's this is not the norm. Million? So, mm -hmm. uh, clerk, I do not have a report. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to resolutions. Additional reports. Uh, I'm sorry, additional reports. Okay. The Fredonia Police Department report for the month of July 2022. Incidents reported 1,224. Fredonia Central School call for service is one. Accidents seven. Arrests reported 33. Vehicle and traffic tickets 40. Domestic incidents 23. Parking tickets 44. The Fredonia Justice Court report for the month of July 2022. Total number of cases closed 81. Of those, vehicle and traffic were 62. Criminal 12. Village ordinances 2. Civil cases three, ABC laws two, total fines and surcharges five thousand four hundred and fifty nine dollars, parking ticket fines five hundred and seventy eight dollars for a total of six thousand thirty seven dollars, and that's all I have for reports. Thank you. Now we'll move on to resolutions, please. Whereas proposed local law number three of 2022 amending the code of the village of Fredonia has been prepared and submitted to the village board of trustees to consider for adoption and whereas proposed local law number three of 2022 would add two handicapped parking spaces in front of village hall and is entitled a local law amending section 208-57 schedule oh goodness 18 of the village code titled <laughs> handicap parking and whereas pursuant to section 20 of the municipal home rule law of the state of New York, a public hearing was duly held on Monday, August 8th, 2022. No parties in attendance were permitted an opportunity to speak in support of or in opposition to said proposed local law and for any part thereof. And whereas the board of trustees of the village of Fredonia off after due deliberation finds it in the best interest of the village to adopt said local law. Now therefore be it resolved, the village of Fredonia hereby adopts said local laws as local law number three of 2022, entitled a local law amending section 208-57, schedule 18 of the village code titled handicap parking, a copy of which is attached hereto and made a part hereof, and be it further resolved, the village of Fredonia is hereby directed to enter said local law in the minutes of this meeting and in the local law book of the village of Fredonia and to give due notice of the adoption of said local law to the secretary of state by filing the same and the Secretary of State as required by law. Second. In motion, a second. We we'll roll call trustees. Trustee Linden. Aye. Trustee Twitchell. Aye. Trustee Bird. Aye. Trustee Syracuse. Aye. Trustee Esperson. Aye. Carried unanimously. Be it resolved that pursuant to Section 5, 520 of Village Law, the following budget amendment is hereby approved. 
$50,725 in additional revenue to A4089 federal aid ARPA funds, $5,725 in additional expense to A9950.9 capital project fund paid, paid in, $31,200 to H3410.2 fire department PPO turnout gear, $7,530 to H1620 Village Hall Air Conditioning, $11,995 to H5110.2 Capitol Street Tractor. Second. It's been a motion and a second. <clears throat> Trustee Linden? Aye. Trustee Twitchell? Aye. Trustee Bird? Aye. Trustee uh, Syracuse? Aye. Trustee Esperson? Aye. Carried. Can you do that now? Do you want to do that one first? You have to do the okay. percent. Okay. We resolve that the authorization for the purchase of the Kubota D1105 with cab and plow for $22,276.22 on March 7th, 2022 is hereby rescinded. Second. There's been a motion and a second. Trustee Linden. Aye. Trustee Twitchell. Aye. Trustee Bird. Aye. Trustee Syracuse. Aye. Trustee Esperson. Aye. Carried. Be it resolved that pursuant to section 5-520 of village law, the following budget transfers are hereby approved. $33,531 from H5110.2 Capital Street Pickup to H5110.2 Capital Street Tractor. $22,276 H5110.2 Capital Street RTV to H5110.2 Capital Street Tractor. Second. And a motion and a second. Trustee Linden? Aye. Trustee Twitchell? Aye. Trustee Bird? Abstain. Trustee Syracuse? Aye. And Trustee Esperson? Aye. Carried four to, uh, four to, carried by four vote with one abstain. Whereas the village requires a new tractor and plow for the street department, and whereas the Larry, whereas Larry Romance and Son, Inc., 2769 Route 20, Sheridan, New York, was provided a quote on state bid for a New Holland Model T 4.80F four wheel drive tractor for 62,000 and 60 inch wide V blade with six inch flares for $4,710. And whereas the tractor and V-blade are suitable for the village's purpose, therefore be it resolved that the village board hereby authorizes the purchase of the New Holland Model T4.80 four wheel drive tractor and 60 inch wide V-blade with six inch flares for a total of $66,710. Second. Been a motion and a second. Trustee Linden? Aye. Trustee Twitchell? Aye. Trustee Bird? Abstain. Trustee Syracuse? Aye. Trustee Esperson? Aye. Carried by four on <clears throat> vote with one abstain. We have to go back. Yep. Yeah, we have to go back. Whereas the village requires a new air conditioning system for the boardroom and whereas Cagino Plumbing and Heating Inc., 160 <laughs> Cushing Street, Fredonia, New York, has provided a quote for a new Mitsubishi train 3 ton 24.6 SEER ductless AC only system with installation for $7,530. And whereas the air conditioning system is suitable for the village's purpose, therefore be it resolved the village board hereby authorizes the purchase and installation of the air conditioning system $7,530. Second. There's been a motion and a second. Trustee London. Aye. Trustee Twitchell. Aye. Trustee Bird. Aye. Trustee Syracuse. Aye. Trustee Esperson. Aye. Carried. I'll make a motion that we table um, the resolution regarding um, the documents and logistics for the long-term borrowing of the wood chipper from Municipal Solutions. Okay, there's been a motion I'll to table that. Is there a second? I'll that second motion? that. There's been a motion and a second to table that resolution. Trustee Linden. Okay. Aye. Trustee Twitchell. Aye. Trustee Bird. Aye. Trustee Syracuse. Aye. Trustee Esperson. Aye. Carried. Mm -hmm. Do we have any other ones? These ones? <coughs> 
whereas proposed law number four of 2022 amending the code of the village of Fredonia has been prepared and submitted to the village board of trustees to consider for adoption and whereas proposed local law number four of 2022 would increase the, the current water rate and is uh, entitled local law amending section 287-8A of the code of the village of Fredonia to provide for an increase increased water rate and whereas pursuant to section 20 of the municipal home rule law of the state of New York a public hearing was duly held on Monday August 22nd 2022 and all parties in attendance were permitted an opportunity to speak in support of or in opposition to said proposed local law or any part thereof and whereas the Board of Trustees of the Village of Fredonia, after due deliberation, finds it to be in the best interest of the village to adopt said local law. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Village of Fredonia hereby adopts said local law as local law number four of 2022, entitled Local Law Amending Section 287-8A of the Code of the Village of Fredonia to provide for an increased water rate, a copy of, of which is attached here to and made a part of thereof hereof and be it further resolved the village of fredonia clerk is hereby directed to enter said local law in the minutes of this meeting and in the local law book of the village of fredonia and to give due notice of the adoption of said local law to the secretary of state by following the same with the secretary of state as required by law Second. It's been a motion and a second to roll call the trustees. Trustee Linden. Aye. Trustee Twitchell. Aye. Trustee Bird. Nay. Trustee Syracuse. Nay. Trustee Esperson. No. The local laws struck down by a 3 2 vote. Local law number four amending the charter and code the village code for water rate whereas proposed local law number five of 2022 amending the code of the village of Fredonia has been prepared and submitted to the village board of trustees to consider for adoption and whereas proposed local law number five of 2022 would increase the current sewer rate and is entitled local law amending section 237-15 D of the code of the village of Fredonia to provide for an increased sewer charges and whereas pursuant to section 20 of the municipal home rule law of the state of New York, a public hearing was duly held on Monday, August 22nd, 2022, and all parties in attendance were permitted an opportunity to speak in support of or in opposition to said proposed local law or any part thereof. And whereas the board of trustees of the village of Fredonia, after due deliberation, finds it in the best interest of the village to adopt said local law. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the village of Fredonia hereby adopts said local law as local law number five of 2022, entitled Local Law Amending Sections 237-15D of the Code of the Village of Fredonia to provide for an increased sewer charges, a copy of, of which is attached hereto and made a part hereof. And be it further resolved, the village of Fredonia clerk is hereby directed to enter said local law in the minutes as uh, minutes of this meeting and in the local law book of the village of Fredonia and to give due notice of the adoption of said local law to the Secretary of State by filing the same with the Secretary of State as required by law. Second. It's been a motion and a second. Trustee Linden. Aye. Trustee Twitchell. Aye. Trustee Bird. Nay. Trustee uh, 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 Syracuse. Nay. Sorry. <laughs> Trustee Esperson. No. The local law fails by a 3-2 vote for a local law number five amending the sewer charges. That's all for resolutions, I believe. Uh, next village, uh, we need we need a motion to go into executive session for personnel for the fire department. Okay. I'll make the motion. Second. And a motion a second to enter an executive session to discuss personnel issues in the fire department. Trustee Linden. 
Aye. Trustee Twitchell. Aye. Trustee Bird. Aye. Trustee Syracuse. Aye. Trustee Asperson. Aye. Thank you. Carried. The next Village of Fredonia workshop and board meeting will be take place Tuesday, September 6, 2020. 3 p.m. in the trustee room, second floor of Village Hall. We say we 